the magazine's first edition published on september 5 2020 and 25 issues have since been released the just agriculture magazine and newsletter has published more than 2500 articles written by academicians researchers and students at icr universities it is extensively read by academicians professionals and farmers in 63 different nations and 28 different indian states agro environmental education and farmers welfare society on the other hand intends to improve their livelihood options for more than 1 million farm households in the country these both are amongst the largest networks of agriculture and allied sector professionals in the country right now so now that we have got into the session let me take this opportunity to greet greet and thank dr nazir ahmed ganai vice chancellor of sheri kashmir university of agriculture sciences and technology kashmir dr dps badwal organizing director of this training program dr mohit bharadwaj course director member of the organizing committee and most importantly the participants in this session i extend a warm welcome to our session's guest joanna kanib potka ma'am executive director and co-founder choosing food 3050 and smarter foods millet hub before inviting her to deliver the lecture on the critical need to apply a triple bottom line to your work let me briefly introduce her to inspire our participants in order to achieve the sustainable development goals by 2030 and net zero emissions by 2050 joanna ma'am executive director and co-founder of choosing food 3050 is committed to increasing demand for the food and food systems she spent the past 9 years working in india as the co-founder and executive director of smart food initiative which was chosen in 2017 by usaid and the australian government as one of the top 10 global food innovations she was also the assistant director general is of the uh, ipreset international crops research institute for semi arid tropics she started her work as an agriculture economist before transitioning into market research and agri business strategy since then she has worked in a range of other marketing related fields such as communication business development strategic marketing knowledge management an uptake of scientific research she has experience working for the government the business sector and the non profit groups including four cgir agricultural research center she has 30 years of professional experience and has lived and worked in australia italy malaysia the philippines sri lanka india and sri lanka she holds a bachelor of economics a graduate diploma in management a professional post graduate development diploma in marketing and a master of science in global marketing she is also a fellow of the australian marketing institute and a member of the chartered institute of marketing in uk so i welcome you ma'am to deliver this lecture thank you ruchika and um thanks also to just agriculture for keeping this huge initiative going for a number of years now so i'll just share my screen Okay. Uh can you confirm you can see that I think? Yes ma'am. The screen right. is okay. visible. All right, wonderful. All right. So I'm talking today on um the importance of having a triple bottom line when you're working in the field of of um food and agriculture. Um a triple bottom line is commonly used in business uh when businesses want to not only just have a profit bottom line but they do want something that is going to care about the planet and um and the people and society um and so but we've been applying this to food and agriculture so how whether it be development research government or private industry what do if we're in the food and agriculture area what do we really need to take into account when we're looking at a triple bottom line um and if you look at how development has changed over the years well over the decades so if you look at say um in india in the 50s and 60s when we had um 
basically a, a challenge of potential mass starvation. And we had then what was called the Green Revolution. So that was about having food security for the country. It was having enough food. Um, so the big focus was on productivity and production. Um, then later became the awareness around having not just food security, but nutrition security. So understanding it's not just the quantity of food, but it's the quality of that food that is critical. Then later became a focus more on um, sustainable diets. So it was then looking at the environmental side, how can we have agriculture and food that's more sustainable on the environment? Um, but what we're seeing now is the biggest challenge is, is how we don't treat all these in silos. It's about how we have solutions that cut across all of that. We need the food security, we need the nutrition security, we need more sustainable diets, and we need to make this viable for farmers, especially the smallholder farmers who are the majority. So unless we start having a triple bottom line and solutions that cut across all of that, we're not really going to succeed because having solutions in silos can potentially have a negative impact on the other areas. So if we're only focused on, on um, say, sustainability of, of the natural environment or if we're only focused on the health and nutrition of the people and so on, we're not going to come up with the best solutions. So it's absolutely critical, no matter what field you're in, whether you're researchers here today um, or whether you're in private industry, um, the solutions need to have a triple bottom line. Um, so I'll just move on here. If you look at um, this year's state of food security and nutrition in the world that comes out from FAO and a number of the other UN agents, um, they said this year's report should dispel any lingering doubts that the world is moving backwards in its efforts to end hunger, food insecurity, and malnutrition in all its forms. Well, that's a really, really dramatic statement. And when we hear that, we should think that we've got to really rethink things. We have to do things differently, and we have to really escalate our efforts. Um, and everyone needs to play a role. No one area can solve this. Um, so if we look at what are the biggest issues happening today um, and the biggest sort of challenges, basically it's it's um, typically identified as what's called the three C's. So that's climate change, conflict and COVID. So, uh, and we all know all about, about these, we're all probably individually Im impacted by it as well. So if you look at climate change, we know there's more natural disasters. Um, there was initially a big focus on mitigation, but now there's also that focus on adaptation to climate change. And um, of course, food and agriculture have a huge role to play in this on both sides, mitigation and adaptation. Um, and then of course, there was initially with climate change, the big focus on energy, um, but now um, the, the focus now has also included agriculture, which is which is good, which is, you know, the second biggest um, contributor to climate change after, en is after energy comes agriculture. So it's agriculture has got a critical role to play. If we then look at conflict, well, of course, we all know um, the huge impacts that the war in um, Ukraine has, has led to. Um, it's led to food shortages in many areas, um, fuel prices going up, fertilizer prices going up, as well as shortages. Um, many countries have put on a lot less fertilizer than they would normally because of the increasing price and the lack of availability. And we may still see an impact later of how that's going to affect even a less sort of production around the world. Um, and, and of course, there's conflict in many other areas, but 
but this particular one is having global impact. Um, it also means the conflict has stretched a lot of government budgets. I mean, climate change had already stretched budgets and many countries have gone into much larger deficits than they would have if there hadn't been climate change. The conflict in Iraq has really stretched a lot more countries further with that. Um, and so, of course, we'll, we'll see that um, uh, there's, there's potential for global um, recession as well with all these impacts. And of course then, yeah, the COVID, uh, hopefully we've seen the worst of it. It's not over, but hopefully the worst is over. But what that did is it uh, refocused a lot of countries to think a little more about self-sufficiency. I mean, the conflict um, helped them think that and so, so did COVID. Um, because of that need, and also a lot stronger regional linkages. Uh, it made people rethink supply chain models, uh, and it also made people a lot more health aware uh, because the general health of people helped them have better resilience to cope with crises like COVID. Now, we also have um, across the big three Cs, which are like the big dramatic changes that, that have happened. Um, we've still got hunger and poverty as a big issue and actually significantly rising again. We had decades of improvements of hunger and poverty, fantastic um, uh, initiatives, both in India, around the world. Uh, but in 2018, we saw a, a, a sudden change and now hunger and poverty have significantly increased and because of COVID-19 and the conflict um, in Iraq, we've seen that even increase further now. Um, same with health and nutrition, some areas like um, anemia, which is still increasing in um, India, uh, diabetes, which is increasing worldwide, because um, India is about to become um, take over China and become the largest uh, number of people uh, with um, diabetes in the world. Um, Africa's increasing bigger than any other country. I think it's something like 137% it's going to increase with number of people with diabetes over the next couple of decades. Um, so it's huge issues there. Um, while we still also have... Um, Issues around um, soil degradation. We still have a lot of a lot of uh, huge um, decreases in in soil fertility and loss of soil every year. Water scarcity continues to be an issue in many many countries, and it's increasing. Desertification is increasing. Biodiversity loss is still increasing. Um, and, you know, we're talking more about not just sustainable agriculture, but regenerative agriculture, because we can't even just keep things where they are. We actually have to start improving those natural resources. Um, and we're doing that in a tough environment with, with climate change um, at the door. Um, there's still issues around social equity and empowerment, especially for women. Um, and unless this is taken into account in all the solutions, we won't achieve what we, what the potential that's there. Um, and then we continue with economic disasters. So potential recession in the world I mentioned before, um, the difficulties Sri Lanka's had, et cetera. And cutting across all these, are the sustainable development goals, which are the real targets that are set. And what that quote mentioned just before that I showed that, you know, when we're going backwards with the sustainable development goals. So I didn't mean to paint a, a such a negative picture, but, but we are in a really, really challenging time. Um, and that only makes it more critical that when we're looking at solutions, we don't look at them in silos. It makes it more complex without any doubt at all, but absolutely critical that we look at solutions that, that have a triple bottom line. Um, and actually, just to show what I, I meant before, here's a statistic on glo global hunger. Um, so you can see back in about... Um, uh, from 2017 to 2018 is when global hunger, after decades of improvement, started to go up. And then, of course, once um, COVID hit, 
and now the conflict in um, Ukraine, then we've got um, global hunger statistics going up significantly. Um, so what you probably heard about a lot um, is, is talk all the time about we've got to transform the food system. Um, and everybody's talking about it, but of course it's always how you do it that's the biggest challenge. And when you look at the definition of transform, transform doesn't mean change, it means big change. So unless there is big change, we will not tackle these big, big issues that I've, I've just been, been um, highlighting. Um, so we have to, in that case, transform our approach. We can't do the same things we've been doing. We may have been doing excellent things, but we have to look at how we do things differently, how we can do them better, how we can escalate solutions. Um, we have to ensure this holistic approach, and that the triple bottom line is about a holistic approach. Um, more complex, but absolutely critical if we want to transform the food system. And of course, we have to reach scale. Uh, there's a lot of fantastic initiatives out there, but the big challenge always is how you take it to scale. Um, so there has to be a lot of focus on that. Um, so a triple bottom line for food and agriculture would be something that is nature positive, uh, human health positive and community positive. So under nature positive, it might be, say, achieving the greenhouse gas targets through smarter food systems and there'll be um, better natural resource management as well. Human health positive may be about you know, that focus on reducing diabetes, anemia, and malnutrition with smarter foods. Um, and community positive, it's going to be about making farming, especially for smallholder farming, more profitable and how you engage the women and youth in the future. Now, part of the solution that I like to promote, if we want to have big impact, which is absolutely critical, to, to deal with these huge, huge challenges we have, then we need to target staples. There's a lot of things we need to do. No one solution works. But I particularly like to promote that staples are extremely important. So the in India, that's, that's rice and wheat. Um, but the, because the staples are such a huge portion of the diet, if we can somehow have a triple bottom line on the staples, that's how we can have a big impact. Um, and I think that we need to do this both with existing staples and we need to bring in new and diversify the staples. Um, so I'll talk a little bit more on that. So I did a quick um, analysis on Google. I, I just put in half a dozen or five different crops to see how many hits on Google you get. And rice came up number one by a long, long way. Um, and, and rice um, is, is by far the biggest staple. Um, half the global population relies on rice and 30% rely on wheat. It is a livelihood of 1 billion people and of 144 million farmers. It's a staple of 2 billion people and a lot of them are as some of the poorest people in the world too, who are also um, having rice as their staple. And it's eaten by 3.5 billion people around the world. So it's huge crop. So if we can impact rice to be more sustainable, to be more nutritious, to impact, to be more viable for the farmers, then we can have a much bigger impact on, on some of these challenges we have. Um, and the thing is, there are big solutions that exist already, and, and they're not scaled yet, and not everyone knows about them. But um, IRI, International Rice Research Institute, and others have come up with some amazing solutions on how you can get more sustainable rice systems, um, which do um, significantly reduce the methane gases that are released, they significantly reduce the amount of water that's needed, and they still give more yields to the farmers. And I'll talk later also about um, healthier rice. 
Um, now that's about targeting the staples that we already have to have big impact. But we also need to bring in other staples at the same time to bring in diversity. Um, now, um, the food system divide is about where for decades we've had the biggest investments in the big three, the wheat, maize and rice, the big three staples. Um, so when something is invested in, it does extremely well. They develop good value chains and it attracts more investment, which means it does even better, which attracts more investment and so on. So they've been highly successful. But what that means is it's harder for something else to break in. Um, so you have this food system divide and we do we know we need more diversity on farm. We know we need more diversity in the diet, of course, of the right foods. <laughs> um, so if we could diversify the staples, that's again how we can have big impact. And if you have a look here in India with this, the staples, how they've grown, if you look right back to 1960, where, okay, rice was a significant staple and then the others were, were at a similar level. Now you've got rice has increased 300%. Wheat has significantly increased 800%. Maize now has started growing, but the traditional millet and sorghum has, has hardly moved at all in production um, and per capita consumption um, decreased. Um, so now millets were a key staple um, back decades ago in India. Um, and they're highly nutritious. They um, are very, very hardy. They're climate smart crops. So if we were to diversify the staples, then millets absolutely are the crop we should focus on. Um, there's a wide range of different types of millets. They originate from different continents. Um, they're grown and eaten in other continents, even though India has the largest range of millets and the largest range of millet products that exist. They are definitely the most advanced country in the world. So India can play a leading and is playing a leading role to develop the millet industry. Um, the millets are grown in different terrains, which is a big positive. So they're grown in the tropics of Kerala. They're grown in the drylands of Telangana. They're grown in the deserts of Rajasthan. They're grown up in the mountains in Uttarakhand. So quite an amazing crop with that huge range um, of areas where they can grow. Um, and they were the staples in many countries. Um, now, if you look at the nutrition value of millet, so the, the finger millet, the ragi, has three times the amount of calcium as milk and almost the same bioavailability level, which means you will get three times the amount of calcium from finger millet as you will from calcium. Uh, the millets have a low glycemic index and have been shown to reduce the risk of developing type 2 diabetes and can actually potentially reduce um, someone being diabetic to non-diabetic. Uh, it can reduce cholesterol and potentially to reduce um, BMI, so the, to help people um, reducing being overweight. Uh, depending on which millet and the variety, they can be very high in iron and zinc, and it has been shown that consuming millets can reduce anemia. So very, very important, um, the iron and zinc level. They are high dietary fiber, good protein levels, high in antioxidants and gluten-free. Um, environmentally, they grow with minimal fertilizers and pesticides, so they naturally have a low carbon footprint. They need much less water to grow than other cereals. They survive in dry, hot conditions, so climate smart. They have a great yield potential because less attention has been played to them, then they haven't come anywhere close to their yield potential yet. So there's, there's great um, opportunities for farmers there. And there's multiple uses. So they're used um, as human food in feed and fodder, um, brewing, and there's different industrial uses as well. Um, and the time is right now to bring millets back as a staple. There's climate change priorities and, and millets can both mitigate and be an adaptation strategy for climate change. Um, 
they will help impact a lot of the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, there's urban food trends now making uh, millets are starting to become the trendy food in urban areas, which is fantastic because they then become the aspirational food. There's still a nostalgia around millets. And a lot of people here would say, oh, I remember my grandparents um, had, had millets or we would have millets at their place, et cetera. Um, millets also fit some of the biggest global health food trends. They're a superfood, they're an ancient grain, they're gluten-free, the low glycemic index, good for losing weight, etc. cetera. Um, and, um, and of course, with next year being the International Year of Millets, then um, this is the time to, to leverage that. The government of India, Odisha, Uttarakhand, many states are also having millet missions and and so this is the time to, to really look at how to leverage that opportunity. Um, and, and, you know, depending on which millet, millets can be cooked and boiled just like rice. So, um, you know, it can be a staple as well as a lot of really creative products are now made from it, from millet pancake mixes to millet dosa mixes, idli, et cetera. Um, but if we were to have this triple bottom line, we have to have strong, distinct targets um, to and 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 something that that really is challenging. So if you look here, the uh, I'm just giving an example. The EU is proposing to have a target to reduce the use of chemical pesticide by 50% by 2030. I'm just putting this up because this is an example of of a target that's big and bold and challenging. And that's what we've got to do with the triple bottom line. Um, so targets might be half the area cultivated is sustainably managed and 25% is even certified as sustainably managed. And in these systems, 20% have reduced water usage, and uh, reduce greenhouse gas footprint up to 50% and boost farmer incomes 10 to 20%. They're the sort of targets we should have. Um, if you go to um, an additional 1 million women empowered improve, and improved with careers and income, and half the varieties sold of our staples are biofortified or whole grain. Um, and this is um, biofortified, I'm sure you all know, but that's where we breed through conventional breeding for higher levels of nutrients um, in, in the crops. Uh, it's not about fortifying the food. Fortifying the food is when you add synthetic chemicals, typically they are, and often to add those synthetic chemicals, it's had to go through a uh, process which is ultra processing whereas biofortified is naturally um, breeding naturally there into the grain so um, a, a really really big benefit fortified food has has a role especially when there's a very dramatic uh, health need that needs sudden and immediate attention whereas biofortified food is it's a natural process, natural foods, and it really is is the long term solution. Um, and whole grain is something that's not been tackled a lot um, because the problem really with one of the biggest problems with something like rice and wheat is that it's it's uh, highly polished. So you strip out all the um, fiber, which is extremely important and also a lot of the nutrients. Um, so now, creating whole grain to be popular again, as it once was, is going to be a big challenge. It's, uh, it's about behavior change. It's about creating a whole um, initiative around making people aware the huge value of whole grain, huge, um, and, and the, the dangers of highly polished grains. Um, but, you know, this is a, an issue that we must take on. It could make a huge difference to, uh, it could significantly reduce diabetes, significantly reduce anemia and malnutrition if we could just bring back the whole grain. But a major effort is needed um, to, to achieve that. But all these are big, bold targets. 
um, these are together make a triple bottom line. Um, so a recent study came out that looked at the return on investment of agricultural research for development and found the return on investment is 10 to 1, which is really, really large. I mean, 10 to 1 is massive. So it is worth the while of governments and others putting um, investments into this. But 10 to 1, I'd say you get 10, you know, benefit of 10 to every one sort of unit that you invest, that actually only proves that we're grossly underinvested. Um, because really you should be investing until you reach break-even point. So it only shows we've massively underinvested in research for food and agriculture. Um, so uh, I, I, so coming to the end here, where really I think that we dramatically need to reimagine the, our food and agriculture. We need to transform how we grow and how we eat, and we need to do this with the triple bottom line. And we have to care just as much about um, what we, how we grow our food as how we eat our food. It's all equally important, and we need to have solutions that work on this together. Um, so thank you very much, and uh, I'll hand it back to Ruchika. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am. It was a great lecture and it was quite a new topic for us to learn about. Uh, and ma'am, there are certain questions of our participants also. Ma'am, we have mentioned uh, uh, in your PPT, it was mentioned certain times that uh, SDGs, uh, Sustainable Development Goals. Ma'am, can you elaborate uh, briefly on uh, what are these Sustainable Development Goals to our participants who are new to this? Sure, I'd be happy to. So uh, actually history has it, it used to be the Millennium Development Goals and they lasted for a decade or so and then uh, and they were set by the United Nations um, and by all the countries that participate in the United Nations came together and decided to set goals. And then, so initially it was Millennium Development Goals and then uh, it became the sustainable development goals. So they set uh, targets and the targets are for 2030. So it's not far away now, actually. And it covers everything. It covers from health and nutrition to equity, uh, to natural resources, um, around climate change, um, around um, being uh, fair and equitable um, cultures or systems. Um, so it covers everything. It's not just food and agriculture, but of course, food and agriculture cut across many, many areas. Um, and so, yes, yeah, so very, very clear targets were set by the United Nations and every country that's part of the United Nations um, agreed and signed up to this. So each country then had their own strategies on how they would reach the sustainable development goals. Because if every country does it, then together globally, we, we can really reach those goals. Yeah. Uh, okay, ma'am, thank you so much. Ma'am, another question is how we can create awareness about millets in our farmers at ground level so that they can grow them uh, because in India, MSP is not fixed for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Okay, so I would never directly ask farmers to grow millets because what we have to do is ensure the market is there. Um, and, and that's been the challenge. So the challenge has been the market and also a level playing field, which is exactly what you mentioned about having the same, the minimum support price, um, the um, public distribution system and, and so on. Um, so the government is trying to bring about a level playing field, and if anything, they need to incentivize for, for the millets. Um, but in the meantime, what people can do is look at how to develop markets, how to develop products, how to engage the local communities into maybe having their own primary level processing so they can get cleaner, higher quality millets out. Uh, working with farmer 
producer organizations to do that, um, maybe getting the women's groups involved in creating some millet products and being able to sell that. Um, so, so it's, yeah, it's building that whole sort of value chain. Um, so, so not just rushing in, asking the farmers to grow it. I mean, it, it's good for a lot of farmers because it actually reduces the risk because it's going to be hardier, it's going to survive, have a greater chance of surviving if there's a, a drought time um, and, and with climate change, et cetera. But do it thinking of the markets. Where are the farmers going to sell to? How could that be helped? How could it, the, the millets be collected and sold, you know, to through through group group, you know, through aggregation or through value adding? Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, in general, we consider millets uh, as an inferior food uh, and it is uh, subjected to just a particular uh, consumer base. Uh, as 2023 is the international year of millets, ma'am, how you see it, uh, it's going to create a change in the mindset of people in a uh, major, more people will start adopting millets as a uh, healthy alternative. Ma'am, because uh, how, uh, how much we can advocate about the benefits of millets, but people st still uh, will prefer to have the, their traditional foods like those uh, of cereals and other ones. Okay. Um, Yes, well, remember millets were the traditional food too, <laughs> um, but um, but no, you're right. I mean, they then got a a bit of a negative feel to it, seen as food for the poor people or um, um, sort of the old fashioned food. But over the last say eight years, there's been a massive increase of of entrepreneurs and startups mm -hmm. that have come in and started to popularize modern convenient products with millets you get the millet pancake mixes the millet dosa mixes the dosa batters you get um, smoothie mixes um, baby foods you get all sorts of convenient monarch products i mean there's an absolute massive number of products now on the market um, what this has done is it's helping to change the image of millets as just being seen as old fashioned because it's there, it's modern, it's convenient. Um, it's starting, it's also started to be very popular more in the urban areas, but that's good because that's growing the market, that's helping change the image. Um, it's still going to take time to do it. But I mean, India is in a good position in that the government is well behind this as well. Um, and there will be different campaigns that will be run. Uh, a lot more awareness programs will be run. Um, so I and and I think there's going it's not just going to be in India. There will be a global movement, too, uh, just like quinoa became popular. But we're hoping millet isn't just another quinoa because quinoa is very niche. Um, it became a big global product. I mean, it's it sort of uh, really took off and got known globally as that next big ancient grain and superfood. Well, millets are the next one. Um, and it's an awareness. It's a marketing that's needed. It's having the right products. Um, but it doesn't happen overnight. But um, I believe it can and will happen. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, as you also know, and we are, we are just hearing about it that India would be going to be the largest uh, populated country in the next uh, in the next year. So, how would uh, this millet uh, millet will help us to achieve that food security in the coming years? Um, okay, so it'll help a lot, especially with climate change, because climate change means the temperatures are going to get hotter, and we're going to have more extreme weather conditions. So we need the food that we grow to be as hardy as possible. And that and millets are so hardy, so resilient. Um, they're also an option for the more marginalised farmers who don't have the lush, um, lush sort of and, and great soils and lush environments. Um, those marginalised farmers who have fewer options on what they can grow um, millets also are a great option for them uh, because they're so hardy and they can, you know, call the a climate smart crop. And because of that variability, of, well, it, 
will depend on the variety grown, but the fact that they can be grown in different areas. Um, and really, they're often called the or described as the last crop standing in times of drought. Um, and of course, you cannot grow anything unless there's some water. You have to have water, but it but the minimal water, it, it will survive as long as possible um, with minimal water. So, so it's going to be even more important uh, as populations grow and as we um, as climate change becomes um, more of a challenge. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, that's all for the question and answer session. And we are thankful for you for this wonderful lecture. And uh, I'm, I'm uh, definitely sure that our participants would have learned a lot from this section. Uh, thank you, ma'am. And now I uh, request Ms. Preeti to take over this. Thank you, ma'am. And ma welcome, Ms. Preeti. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Hope I'm audible and visible to everybody. Yeah, you're audible and visible. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, <clears throat> a very good, good morning, uh, all of you. On the behalf of Sherry Kashmir University of Agricultural Sciences and Technology, Team Just Agriculture and Agro-Environmental Education and Farmers Welfare Society Punjab, I Preeti was cordially welcome all of you to the successful 11th day of Agriculture 4.0, the Future of Farming Technology and Agripreneurship Development, which is 15 days international online training come workshop program. I wholeheartedly welcome all of you. I hope all of our participants are enjoying and learning to the full. Coming to the session now, I would take the privilege and to bring your attention to this, to this and warmly welcome our chief guest and speaker of the session, Mr. Devendra Kumar Kaushik, who is presently adjunct professor in management facul faculty at Del Delhi Technological University. In addition to that, Sir is founder and CEO of DND Green Tech Solutions LLP, director and global head at KBK Environ Infrastructures uh, Limited, advisor at AgriBird Private Limited also. Sir has retired as, as director of finance at Indian Council of Agricultural Research, Ministry of, in, Ministry of Agriculture, Government of India. Sir has studied at Faculty of Management Studies at Delhi University, diploma in food and agribusiness management, Food Service Systems from Cornell University and Advanced Management Program from SDA Bacconi, Milan, Italy. Also, Executive Management Program, Leadership and Strategic Policy for Senior Managers in Government of Harvard Kennedy School. Sir has an experience of 35 plus years in finance, business strategy, budget, audit, proficiency in concept to implementations of ERP projects across organizations, business planning, analytical skills, IT strategy and project management, policy formulation, monitoring, and its evaluation. I welcome you, sir. We are happy to have an experienced person like you, sir, today. So without any further delay, I would like to, I would request you, sir, to join the podium and address, sir. Over to you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. First of all, very good morning to every one of you. The organizers, particularly, I'm very thankful to you and the organizers for giving me this opportunity to address this uh, very knowledgeable gathering. So I would like to try to share my ideas and my experience with the, all the participants and the organizers sir, and the, your team. Thank please continue, sir. Yeah, please. Thank Thanks a lot. So my presentation, as you know, is about the agripreneurs enterprise in this country, what is the scope, how it is growing and what can be done in this sector. As you know, India is predominantly still a agrarian country. I'm... It's visible, sir, visible. It's sir. visible, no? Yes, and sir. my presentation also? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. So as everybody knows, this country is basically an agrarian country and still 70% of the population is earning their livelihood from either directly from activities or through allied sectors. And 15%, everybody knows that the Indian economy is getting 15% GDP roughly from agriculture. So this 
and india is having different climatic zone different seasons so it is providing a huge scope for developing the agri entrepreneurship or agri startups in this area as everybody knows the rest of the area the other industries were almost has reached a saturation point but agriculture is still agri industry agri startups and this field food processing and different processing is still having a huge potential to develop businesses in this country throughout the uh, far and wide so we will consider that how this area is providing opportunities to the young entrepreneurs or the people who are already in this field and want to diversification in their industry so this has huge potential of business for the agri entrepreneurs particularly the young people the young generation the the people who are coming from agriculture sciences or agri engineering or processing so we are having huge potential in this area so as you know india is going to be the most fast rapid growth in population and we are going to take over china in next few years so this is not a concern as far as the food productivity is a concern but that is also giving us a huge opportunity is in developing because food security is a concern that's why food one side it is a concern another side it is opening opportunities for the entrepreneurs because huge areas are there as i have people know that indian agriculture is having in certain countries there are such not such a wide spectrum is available for the agriculture as india is having you know we are having uh kind of uh, you know crop cultivation is one area animal husbandry dairying fisheries poultry fo forestry floriculture horticulture different kind of activities are available in india which is not available most of the countries of the globe because due to certain climatic conditions but india is providing those opportunity opportunities another thing is this you know we are having more than 6 lakh villages and roughly 575 or roughly 600 kind of districts as per uh, the announcement of the honorable prime minister recently that we had a plan to have each product for each district if you see the gamma to see the opportunity if one district is going to provide one product and that is because majorly in agriculture because agriculture is the backbone of our economy rural livelihood so if we are having that kind of potential so at least 600 products can be added in this arena which are majorly would be based on your agriculture i am not saying the entirely but majorly will be based on agriculture field so this is one area which is as per my assessment this is giving us a huge potential another thing is this to establish a agri industry ek minute see is having certain advantages first is land because this agri process industries or agri industries are not requiring much of a land as the as compared to other uh, other uh, kind of projects like cement and other kind and in rural india almost every farmer or every entrepreneurs can have a a land of the very cheaper prices so that land can be available easily and most of the what we are thinking the to develop the people who are coming from the farming background or from the rural background to convert them agripreneurs so that the 
employment generation is done at the local area and that they are contributing the uh, economic growth of, growth of that area so out of these things we are having lot of potential and what are the possible areas of entrepreneurship development in agriculture see there are five six major areas where we can the any agripreneurs or a, enterprise can co consider there are seven eight major areas where we are either not reach the full potential of this field or still many things are to be done and there are certain areas where we can do de novo kind of a things because still there are certain areas or certain reason in this country where the industry is almost in nascent stage so all the areas having those kind of post the one area is agro produce processing unit because this this area is basically agro produce in industry unit is basically for the converting the uh, grassroots level agri, agri pinos or the converting the farm families or the rural people uh, to agri pinos reason being these agro produce processing units are basically to processing the raw materials which is available there at nearby the their area so this is very easy and there is no hassles of transportation other thing and it is not the agri produce processing units they don't require high kind of a technology and that high infrastructure so that is available nearby whatever nearby infrastructure is available simple electricity in roads and that kind of things so they can produce the, these units can be established in villages or towns or nearby area and huge things are there these are the for example the rice mill dal mill cereals based industries or pulses oil seed floriculture livestock poultry medicinal herbs there is a huge potential of medicinal herbs and all these aromatic things in this area which can be used by the local resources and can be converted into a successful agri business so then cotton and jute based industry particularly our in eastern part huge potential of converting these uh, agri produce or agri products into a uh, industry or agri pinors then plantation in south india particularly if you will see huge scope for using these raw materials or these kind of agri produce in converting in agri pinors so these are kind of examples where we can use this potential and do use this raw material to uh, 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 develop agripreneurship in this country and uh, setting up a very successful business in this area then another area is agro produce manufacturing unit the first one was basically concerned to the raw material the which is available with the farmers or with the rural economy so we don't need any high high end technology we don't need any high kind of infrastructure and the machinery so simple kind of things which are locally available and indigenous indigenous technologies are available we can use and we can develop this thing we don't need very high kind of training people are aware a little bit trainings can be done which for which many institution in this country are are available to provide i will cover that in next slide where we can get those kind the people who are thinking to be uh, agri pinors in these areas how can they be helped or hand holding can be done for them to be agri pinors in this area so another area major area which is providing huge scope in this area this agro produce manufacturing unit the one was agri processing which was local based this agro produce manufacturing units are basically this converting the converting the raw material into products so this is the area where we can convert this raw material into products so the example i have given you this uh, uh, like of biscuits and many other things are there uh, there in this area sugar cane 
kind of a uh, sugarcane is one area textile is another area paper mills are another area jute mills are other, another area food and beverages are another area uh, tobacco products are another area paper and wood products nowadays wood products are covering a huge attention and rubber and leather products these are certain areas where we can set up different kind of industry where entrepreneurs can come and set up the, these are providing you lot of scope and these individual product individual kind of a category is giving huge scope for setting up uh, entrepreneurs or, or to setting up a business in a successful business in this area so these are few exam i'm giving this such a kind of a wide spectrum is available if someone want to go to in this agri uh, entrepreneurs so it is not limited to one or two areas and dairy is one area dairy is meat processing now it is and you know as the population is growing so we are going to huge demand is domestic demand is uh, coming in this area and another factor is that export factor is there so we can have the export uh, things also in mind then agri input manufacturing units the another area third one is agro input manufacturing units the the future or the people who are thinking to set up to go into this area the third one area is there are huge because we are having so, such a big land such a agrarian uh, farmers uh, we are having more than 15 point something crores farmers in this country so they are going to use huge products which are uh, uh the input products in their area fertilizer bio products bio fuels many things are there which they are going to use in this area so uh, then now it, uh, organic foods are required or they need different kind of things uh, different uh, uh, pesticide fertilizers uh, organic things they are required packaging so these are agri seeds process uh, seeds are required uh, required by different uh, kind of farmers and uh, so th if someone is thinking to set up a business in these areas so these this area also giving a huge kind of a potential huge kind of a opportunity to uh, to enter in this area so they can be in they can go into that area also another thing as people are aware that agro service center i will focus this because i found rest of the areas which i have discussed till so far there are huge or there are there are many things have been already done but still there are potential and can be done but this agro service centers this service center this is because this center this area is expanding very fast and this is going to huge prospects to, for the uh, people who wants to in particular the the people who have certain background in agri uh, culture science or agri businesses or who are having allied fields so these are many many kind of business potentials in this area one is see nowadays diagnostic previously it was not required this is one area where different kind of diagnostic in agriculture fields are required so you can set up certain diagnostic centers in the rural background to provide help then uh, their farm advisory services this is a huge potential nowadays you know the old methods are gone now if you want to have a agriculture is also profitable business then people are requiring and people because it, income is growing and there are certain sector in this country is growing who can give you particularly these cash crops grapes and different kind of meat products these farmers are quite fisheries sector they are quite capable to pay the farm advisory services and they uh, if you are entering into this sector the huge potential is there to set up a good business to providing farm advisory services then equipment resourcing equipment is a huge field now you know our farmers are fragmented and the the, the farmers are having very small holdings 
1.5 or 1 hectare kind of a uh, uh, holding they are and they can't afford the equipments the coastal equipments so this is one area if someone is thinking to be entered in this area so they can set up certain kind of a resource centers in the rural area for the rural communities these resource centers are basically equipment sourcing repair sales these equipment renting these are these are providing equipment sharing if they are having within the village or in the cluster of the villages of these kind of services i think it has a huge potential for the agripreneurs to uh, to set up their businesses in this field then consulting Consulting is also having huge area in different areas, in different kind of fields. Uh, they can, in related to agri-industry and agriculture, they can set up certain uh, businesses or center enterprises in this consulting business. Then marketing, market services. Nowadays, you know, the Indian farmer is not that educated as compared to other fields. And but people want to come in this, they want to be a profitable business, profitable agriculture. So if they want to use certain advanced technology, advanced seed, advanced information, rather information is most important thing nowadays. Until unless you have the right time, right kind of information, uh, the see more you must have seen the Maharashtra farmers and Punjab farmers and any other area. The people are doing suicide and this thing because the one of the major reason is this: the lack of the right kind of a information to the farmers. So this information is very important thing if you are providing those kind of services to the farmers i think this is has a huge potential in this area of one want to set up certain kind of thing then packaging packaging is huge area where we can the agri products and uh, the and using the local kind of a uh, nowadays people are using uh, the other day i was seeing uh, the waste material of banana and the bamboos and other things is being used in packaging. Certain kind of industries, they are using these kind of things. So packaging has a huge potential. So you can set up and the technology is available. If someone wants to go, huge, there are a lot of technologies available for using this bio waste and the old, old kind of setup. Bio waste has a huge potential in setting up agri preneurs or becoming agri preneurs or agri businesses. So this is then market research and analysis. Market research is also a huge area now. When you are going to set up different kind of a industry in this agri field, so definitely one requires different kind of information, research. So one, if is one enthusiastic and have the all the skills with him, so he can enter into this business. This is giving huge potential. And other than these, there are certain areas which are traditional, which are still because the agriculture sector is expanding, this business sector is expanding. So broker retailers these are one area and another one area which is very important shipping and distribution logistic management in agri area because people are not paying because nowadays if you are having a frozen foods meat processing fish so nowadays when people want if people putting up in delhi or ncr region they want a marine fish to have their table which is very fresh and different kind of taste because the growing middle class these are the aspirations and the taste food habits are uh, changing so these these people these particular young generation they are having different kind of requirements to fulfill those requirements you need those kind of facilities also these are basically these are if the agri industry is developing agri business is developing then you require to support that supply you need to strengthen the complete supply chain the logistics logistic management itself is giving a huge potential for setting up agri businesses in this area so wholesalers and then regulatory things if you are going to set up up if you people are having cluster of businesses in agri then there are certain regulate regulations kind of a quality parameters if you are going to particularly in export field there are certain things which are required to be fulfilled so if you can help those agripreneurs being a uh, enterprise uh, 
so you can set up you can help them to find out those uh, to set up their quality labs and to help them to achieve those quality parameters so this is one area also where people can develop their businesses then agri food processing i'm going to cover in who uh, complete i will focus in the what is the businesses are available in agri food processing so this is one area which which is giving a huge potential in setting up of agri food industry this is a largest developing area i think in this country which are giving huge potential in developing agri food businesses processes and uh, preservation then another very important area which was not available previously is digital agriculture nowadays you know satellite drones and the artificial intelligence these kind and different uh, uh, mechanism to uh, for imaginary and providing a, a different uh, uh, services or help to the farmers for even assessing the uh, forecasting of their food productions or the kind of a, kind of a weather forecasting these are things are related to digital agriculture where one can go acquire the knowledge and can be a good and established entrepreneurs in this field and then may, many many others are uh, areas miscellaneous areas are available uh, bamboo and this honey bee uh, pigri lot of agricultural culture there are lot of huge potentials are there in this field where the agri Uh, uh, graduates or the people who can enter into this area and can serve uh, the uh, industry or can set up a good uh, kind of a business flourishing business i will say uh, one thing i want to say this area majorly agri business area is still majorly it is untapped huge potential i have given you the kind of a products we are having raw material we are having but we are not having as much as the uh, requirement is there so people can enter into those areas so this is providing great scope entrepreneurs in agriculture this is area is providing that i have already covered that part then agriculture uh, if we want agriculture to make a profitable and as the prime minister is always emphasizing that to double the income of the farmers then simple using the traditional methods i don't think we are going to be uh, achieve that kind of target until and unless we are aligning these food uh and other agri product businesses in the in the rural economy we are not going to get the desired result so this this has a huge potential and we'll have and in this country luckily because we are having a lot of institutions who, who are uh, developing skills who are developing graduates and who are developing people in this uh, technically capable to Uh, run a businesses in this area so this has huge potential then another benefit why we require this agripreneurship because this is providing if we are going to set up these kind of industries in the rural or countryside then definitely a huge potential for generating employment at the local level that's that's going to be a huge advantage people are not uh, required to rush to the big cities or kind of a, to leave their uh, uh, place then definitely if this is going to be set up and these are huge potential as as i am uh, sharing with you people then definitely a huge contribution will come to the national income and it is going to not only for individual families community and then other uh, other people who are attached to the area then how now in few slides will cover the what kind of a journey in this country because this is a uh, latest phenomena previously this phenomena was not there due to different kind of a initiatives by the government of india private sectors and the people who are funding so lot of players have come into this sector and lot of awareness has gone into the sectors so so these uh, this this is i think fastest developing fastest growing area where the people are being attracted in few years and uh, that's why uh, and it is going to be i think 
uh, this area now is the time to enter into this kind of area because the lot of uh, opportunities and potentials are there so in future i think agri based companies with the areas which i have covered uh, uh, previously these are going to give you the huge potential huge uh, uh, networking and huge kind of a uh, uh, opportunities uh, to develop businesses in these areas so this is not previously it is not kind of that agriculture is not a profitable but it agriculture is profit profitable but if we are doing it differently if we are doing it traditionally then we can say it it has not that kind of a potential but if we are doing differently means agriculture aligned with agribusiness agri entrepreneurs so entrepreneurs can convert into a profitable huge profitable business then definitely technology will is going to be play a very vital role in converting these uh, uh, entrepreneurs into a successful business so we will have to use the uh, uh, advanced technology in this area and people are using then this is that's why in the recent years in this country more than 1300 or 1500 somebody some people are saying giving figures but 1500s are pakka but uh, roughly 2000 agri startups are, have been set up in this area and most of out of these 1500 startups most of these agri startups are coming in the advanced technological field like and these are area uh, and they are people are using artificial intelligence machine learning internet of things so so definitely these are area these are opening the doors for the agripreneurs to make this uh, sector very lucrative and profitable so people are using these technology now this area is not kind of a a truth kind of that people are not using those kind of language those kind of things people are using and, and this has huge potential see even artificial intelligence machine learning all these things all these uh, concepts are not new to agriculture now the, the, the people are there so then see what kind of scene in this uh, areas are now the overall agri tech system the revenue growth of agro 85% during 2019 and 20 this kind of a scene is there the Ernst and young it's a very famous uh, consulting company uh, they have given their uh, estimates that india is going to be developed in this area 24 billion by 2025 so i will give certain figures okay, how this area is giving the opportunities for the people okay, what kind of opportunities are available and how the sector is de developed so this the, these are not the figures of the government these are the figures of the independent agencies which are which are very reputed and trustworthy so th these are uh, the then ban and company this is also very internationally known uh, company which have given a projection of 35 billion by 2025 so that's why i'm saying the uh, the people who are considering who are thinking to join this sector so this is the potential this is the canvas where you can be part of the uh, uh, this then private equity investment has come roughly 66 billion in this area and uh, uh, growing at the it is growing with the rate of 50 percent then what kind of support if someone wants to join in this area if someone wants to come in this area so what kind of uh, support is available to for the potential uh, agri entrepreneurs one is a small Farmers Agri Business Consortia. This is established in New Delhi, and they are providing all kind of help and guidance. Then National Institute of Agriculture Extension Management in Hyderabad. There, then roughly 700 Krishi Vigyan Kendras. 700 Krishi Vigyan Kendras are available in each district of this country, and these basically these are small farm science centers, and they are providing and extend uh, they are extending all the extension work over the technology, and they are providing all helps 
for the people who are want to go in agriculture sector or agriculture business sector. So th then NABARD is also providing many services. Then roughly 110 ICAR institutes there, 71 state agriculture universities there. They are helping those agripreneurs or the people who want to join this sector. They are providing all kind of a help, whether it's a technological advisory or how to enter into the business. These people, these are providing all these help but the as the any other sector uh, uh, other entrepreneurs or uh, uh, enterprising the business are facing uh, th these issues are here also capital issues they are labor issues there but luckily in this area because other sectors labor issues major here labor issues not a major area here it is an advantage because in rural folks mostly either they are not fully engaged or they are partially engaged so we are having a cheap labor in this this is one advantage capital is definitely an issue because that the level of capital requirement is there in the sector we still not but i will show you how the capital is flowing in this area then raw material raw material advantage because raw material is available if you want to go to an agrarian sector raw material is nearby available so that is there market is an issue definitely but recently Ministry of Agriculture and other government agencies and other fields people are these uh, uh, e-markets are being developed uh, and many areas are many uh, works are being done then education luckily education some smaller kind of trainings are required but there are many institutions which are providing but luckily we are having roughly these the complete uh, uh, network of uh, agriculture universities and even general universities and this icr institution and other institutions state government institutions which are providing help and guidance and proper education for the skill manpower to who can man this these kind of industries so these this is the area I am giving the potential and scope where any uh, young person can join and he is having a the sky is the limit I want to say if you will explore this potential sky is the limit the future is I will say future is of this sector industry then now I will cover a few things how the private sector and agri uh, government sector is going to uh, contribute in this field, whether it's a technical help or the uh, setting up a business. The, despite, you know, I will know the entire world uh, and uh, India also uh, has faced, uh, we were victim of this uh, pandemic, but despite the 2020, over dollar 300 million of investment has come into this sector during 2020. So this thing, this speaks, this figure speaks, this, this sector is having a good potential in this country. And then, then one, a very uh, funding uh, uh, agency, SL Omnivore, the agri-tech uh, agri sector there, they have 45.8 million in 2016 to 430.6 million in 2020, roughly 40 times growth. So you'll see how this area is growing, what kind of potential the uh, of the area is there. Then agri startup, I have told, uh, agri startups have come, 1500 agri startups have come in this area. Then can Kane Research report says, the Indian agri-tech market was expected to grow roughly 32% from uh, 2020 to 2025. This Kane, uh, the, 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 their report says, then these what are the areas where the, the maharashtra karnataka ncr region they are attracting a huge uh, agri startup due to their policies and due to the available of the good infrastructure and knowledge base nearby so these are the areas which which are attracting to start a good agri startups in their area and as per one estimate as the keen uh, report the roughly 10 billion will be invested in Indian agri tech startups over the next 10 years. So you can see the 10 billion is going to be attracted, is going to be invested in this area only. So this is a huge area. So one can uh, think over it. Roughly, uh, see, currently 8% of these totally recognized startups in the country are in agri startups. So 
and rest of the things are in the traditional then i will show you few slides where you can have or you can judge what kind of scene is available this private uh, kind of a, this is the money which are being uh, coming from the private uh, funding and particularly in the fdi or different kind of a uh, ways so nearly 100 agri tech startups raised close to 1.33 billion across 139 deals between january 2020 and june 2022 so see the potential how uh, the growth is going in this sector 37 deals worth rupees 1 uh, dollar 155 million and 58 deals 636 million and rest 44 deals 539 millions these are the startups the agri starters and food and uh, basically these are agri startups which are attracting this kind of a uh, money from the outside or the different uh, fund providers then this agri tech startup funding uh, year to year growth this is the this slide shows how the uh, this agri tech startups funding is coming and the total funding is this this this, this is what i have covered this thing 300% jump roughly it is saying so it is it has huge potential then this slide shows what are the top 10 kind of a startups which have, which have been started recently but they are they have done such a huge business and such a, they are such a successful business uh, due to their expertise and good efficiency and using uh, their knowledge and so th they have tapped the uh, tapped the area and the tapped the opportunities so ninja craft way cool dehat absolute agro star arya most of you have heard these names these are top 10 startups they have uh, attracted lot of uh, kind of funding i have given this what kind of funding is uh, have and they they have gone to different kind of series of uh, uh, some some have gone up to d series from a b c d so they are they are regularly that means they are regularly uh, getting funding from the uh, fund raisers and the the uh, kind of a uh, fund providers so this is then this slide gives you a kind of a uh, uh, feeling ki how the, the our country is doing in the startups the ncr reason is definitely is at the number one due to the infrastructure and other facilities then bangalore bangalore is having certain advantages due to the uh, state government policies and the it field and they are uh, they, they the state is uh, previously when the pehle se they are uh, supporting these the startups and all this thing then chennai one another reason pune mumbai and the very surprisingly and there's a uh, good thing that patna region which one cannot think ki that patna region is going to be such a advanced uh, kind of patna samastipur those kind of uh, area which are considered to be uh, as not uh, business friendly or industry friendly so they have come up uh, very nicely to attract the uh, to start up and to attract the funding in this area but surprisingly hyderabad uh, hyderabad is lagging behind if you will see hyderabad has not attracted for agri startup of course in it they are the leaders but as far as the agri startups businesses are coming or agri pinors coming i don't know reason what what is the reason but they, they have not attracted then jaipur and kochi are uh, the then these these are the things which uh, have been done in the private sectors and the private fund people venture capitalist or the uh, the their own money but uh, government of india is also not lagging behind there are many series of uh, or kind of initiatives or the schemes which government of india has uh, doing to promote this sector to attract uh, funding and to facilitate and to bring 
a growth in this sector. So I will give you just a few names, uh, the, the potential or the people who are the future uh, agripreneurs who want to come into their area. I will give you the, uh, I will tell you the three ministries website you can go and you, you can find lot of government schemes which are being uh, drafted and which are basically to help the agripreneurs and to set up industries in their area. There are different kind of a uh, mechanism are there, different kind of facilitations are there, different kind of a, uh, even subsidies are available in most of the schemes if people want to go to join this uh, in this these sectors. These, these are the few, I will uh, name few only because there are huge schemes which we cannot cover. What I'm, I want to say the people who want to join this area, they can refer the Ministry of Agriculture and Cooperation, uh, this uh, Farmers Welfare, uh, uh, their website, they can go and they can find the many schemes, particularly this uh, Pradhan Mantri uh, uh, Raftar kind of a uh, scheme, uh, PMSY, and then uh, the, the MSME, uh, there are many schemes are available in MSME, Ministry of Small and Medium Enterprise, and then uh, food processing industry, food processing ministry, they are also doing a lot of things to promote the uh, industry in that area. And I, I'm going to cover what kind of things are available there. Then there are certain states are there in state governments are there who have come up with different kind of schemes to promote in there to, in, to remove the regional imbalances so northeast particularly there are huge potential in northeast particularly horticulture floriculture and meat processing particularly these are certain and fisheries even uh, these are the areas where you can have you can set up certain businesses and you can earn a good amount of money uh, and uh, so huge see is still in this country roughly more than 22 or 23 percent of uh, food these uh, crop waste are there and particularly vegetables and horticultures and fruits so which is untapped this is such a huge potential we are having if you are taking in 10 percent 12 percent in processing and that's a, this is giving you a huge potential in setting up business so this is then gramin uh, bhandaran scheme there are lot of uh, scope in this bhandaran area warehousing and these cold chains then it's more this I have already told this this small farmers agribusiness consortia is there which are going to help in uh, uh, developing businesses. So then there is this is one area where a lot of agri uh, graduates and post graduates they can do they can set up their businesses in their nearby their village or in their village or nearby. So this is this is one scheme which is going to uh, benefit which the aim of the scheme basically is to uh, for uh, to develop agripreneurs see establishment of agri clinics and agri business centers this is a huge scheme of ministry of agriculture and their subsidies and the kind of help hand holding is also available then promotion and strengthening of agriculture uh, mechanization by training then post harvest technology post harvest have certain many potential uh, to set up uh, setting up businesses in this area so this is one and then national under the ministry of agriculture this uh, national horticulture board they are running lot of schemes to uh, for developing agri businesses or to setting business in those areas so people can see can go to the website of the ministry of agriculture and they can find many many schemes where the government is helping to set up businesses so th these are the then development of commercial horticulture in open development of commercial horticulture and protected this uh, setting up of the kind of a greenhouses glass houses and those kind of and the other technologies which are required in that area so all the uh, help is a uh, uh, grant is available subsidy is available loans are available there are many banks rural banks and the other banks and the particularly nabad which are providing the capital assistance and other assistance in working capital uh, assistant to the these kind of entrepreneurs so uh, it is not that key people um, the, the huge potential huge facilitation whose uh, things are available as compared to other sector and another thing since this sector is growing so competition is little 
less because the, the most of the areas are not tapped so the people who are entering in those areas uh, they are not going to face and then huge uh, due to uh, uh, the growth of the population and the the people who are coming to the middle class so we are having a huge potential to develop businesses in those area then then see food how the opportunities are there in this uh, area fruits and vegetables the country i, I mean to say what kind of a uh, raw material or what kind of things are available fruits vegetables are poultry meat processing all these are hang the, the, we are come the our country is almost in the top horticulture production is that kind of a 334.60 metric ton in 2000 that had touched we are producing 23% of global if so if you want to set up an industry in dairy and milk processing so we are roughly 23% of the raw material is available in this country then third global ag production and then 23 global milk then grocery see grocery basically this grocery uh, supply is coming from agri products agri products so uh, in to, by 2025 the retail market is going to be more than 50% revenue is coming from that it's a 10 billion to 12 billion uh, kind of economy or kind of a uh, market cap then marine products are having a huge potential the uh, uk 5.96 billion was the uh, export then meat processing the kind of 2015 this kind of a 8.8 .8 million tons we have a, a producer of the meat then the conventional crops rice wheat multi cereals you know nowadays uh, the millets and those kind of these have huge potential because the uh, people are having so many processed uh, items of uh, uh, which are made by these things so we are having lot of we don't have any lack of uh, raw material in these areas so that's why we can use all these uh, raw materials and then the, there is one area which is i was saying that roughly 25 percent or 24 percent of who we are having uh, uh, wastage particularly in fruits and vegetables so we need to require those uh, wastage to be utilized and uh, if we can set up certain agri processing or those kind of industries in that area so we'll be definitely going to achieve those uh, targets so the this agri food processing industry is having huge potential the indian food processing market is roughly 25619.3 bill, 30 billion by 2025 or 24 this has 12 point roughly 13% growth is coming from this area and uh, uh, i have told uh, as per even aso chem this is 3 dollar uh, 350 billion kind of industry is going to be developed in this area then there are certain schemes which have been launched by uh, the ministry of food processing which can help the people who are thinking or to set up the industry in this area so th there are certain uh, avenues or certain facilities are available people can go to the sites websites of the ministry but i will list few few schemes one of the mega food parks in this area the government of india has a scheme where you can set up your businesses cold chains in particularly in rural area cold chain has huge potential in this country because the uh, i have already told that 25% uh, or 24% roughly is uh, being wasted and this wastage is due to because we are not having the kind of uh, facilitation in this area then food processing and preservation capacities this is another scheme these are all schemes where you can go and see what kind of industry and what kind of a facilities are available from the government of india backward and forward linkages 
the supply chain management then agro processing clusters they are going to set up food safety and quality assurance i told you in the initial that this is one area which is attracting huge potential in the businesses where the quality parameters are to be met then then i would like to have certain the investment potential in this area the particularly from 2000 to 2022 roughly 2.55 billion us dollar fdi has come into this area then agri process and food products export roughly 5987 million us dollar agri and allied products export 50.2 billion us dollar then this area has added value roughly 18.8% in the export and other areas then private consumption expenditure is roughly estimated to 80.8 trillion 1.08 trillion us dollar the consumption is going to be this kind of in this uh, food products and allied products so this is giving you an opportunity to tap this pie to generate your businesses in this area so this this kind of volume we are having then organic food sector is growing and roughly 75000 crore till 2025 this is one estimate that this uh, organic food because in a way people are very crazy and people are developing taste in organic food so this is one area if you are going to develop organic food and you are going to set up certain kind of industry or businesses in that area then processed food processed food market is growing very rapidly and 470 billion us dollar is uh, the estimate then the uh, this uh, uh, this is going to give you the opportunity so these are then then certain mechanized crop uh, productions these are the area where you can do then food processing setting of value chain all these uh, these are water management because the water and uh, the, this is playing a very good uh, very pivotal role in managing this uh, uh, crops so water management because water is very scarce the people who can have the innovative things in managing the water so the, these are these are the areas where you can set up your businesses then recently when the last month the prime minister has uh, uh, attended a function for this kisan uh, samman sammelan the honorable agriculture minister has declared to to see the potential and the growth and to encourage the agripreneurs in this area so the, uh, the honorable agriculture minister has announced that that setting up of roughly 500 crore startup accelerator for the country and then they are going to set up one committee steering committee under the ministry of agriculture single window clearance will be available so that uh, no bureaucratic bureaucratic hazards and then there are many universities and i have told you the icr institutions other uh, organizations are there to help you people the market market linkage market is a huge uh, kind of a area but uh, the, the, to understand the importance of the area the government is going to set up a market linkage platform and database i have told you the information is very crucial factor this this is a database they are going to and then they are going to Uh, organize different agri startup conclaves so that people are having a cross learning on different areas so th these are certain thing and then drone the you must have people must be aware that in the budget speech uh, this year honorable finance minister madam sita raman ji has declared that that uh, for this digital agriculture drone shakti this is a huge area where we can use the drone shakti and they are going to set up leveraging the benefits of this drone shakti to the agriculture so and sensor base there are one industry there are sensor we are going to use this huge potential for sensor based industry if something is somebody is hang uh, that technology to use in this agriculture so the these were the certain uh, uh, things which are being the potential the kind of a, i have given you statistics what what kind of investment available what kind of people in the private sector the uh, fdi or the government the people are 
in, into the though this as per my assumption this is a bubbling sector nowadays and one can jump into this sector and can reap the benefits of this sector now i will take only 5 minutes for uh, see i am associated with two agri startups uh, recently so uh, within 5 minutes i will cover those what are those agri startups and what are they are giving one is dnd green tech solutions this is a, a, a a company which was set up during the covid time uh, 2000 so one year since people were uh, not uh, that kind of atmosphere was and it was a recently established company basically company's purpose is that this is uh, going to help people this is a basically research technology advisory company and it's a consulting primarily it's a consulting company which are helping people for uh, techno develop technology whether in the country or the outside the people who are the potential startups or the people who are want to come into this business and this company is having roughly i am also part of this company the company has many experts in this country as well nationally as internationally roughly 20 top most uh, experts are uh, on the board of the company and uh, uh, very high ranking people in the few are the vice chancellors and the people who are the entrepreneurs uh, roughly 20 years or, or the policy makers all people and the bankers the people uh, are there in the company's board so who are going to help the people to for uh, to identify the right technology or to having uh, a kind of a bonds with the outside companies uh, or to generate the to bring the technology in this country innovative technology and setting up their businesses so th these are the these are the services uh, provided by this company and innovative agriculture practices and methods ensuring value innovation disruption the investors data based particularly in digital agriculture the company is uh, very strong uh, the uh, working with manufacturers organic and sustainable products to the market and uh, conducting seminars kind of thing and these are studies and the, the, these are the primary area of the company which are and the company recently has helped uh, to uh, the, this company has a tie up with the for the uh, kind of a digital agriculture you know uh, with this there is one company in switzerland this is called celsius pro this is top 10 european company which are working in uh, the satellite imagery and drone technology so the company dnd has a uh, uh, tie up with this company to work in this uh, southeast asia and particularly india for developing or to helping and to generate business particularly for those uh, using of technology using of uh, drones and using of satellite particularly imaginary and many other things sensor based kind of things so the, the, this one area and this company is very the the celsius pro are working in america north america they are working in africa and australia uh, and few countries in europe so the company this dnd in agriculture this uh, this company has a tie up with this company and this company is also having tie ups with different iits iit robert and IIT uh, Rurki. The IIT Rupert has, we have culminated a, a memorandum to work together and IIT Rurki this uh, under process and definitely in future we will be and different, uh, similarly we are having uh, tie-ups with other private organizations and the company is helping the company has helped recently uh, two companies in developing or procuring their technology outside and setting up a memorandum and to providing them technological backstopping or the uh, kind of a facility one is kbk environment infrastructure limited so this company is a chandigarh based company and they are doing very uh, in different areas particularly in water technology and they, they are in food processing parks set up and fisheries developing a kind of a uh, uh, RAS kind of a plants in the country. So they are helping and this uh, DND team has helped them in acquiring the technology and setting up to providing them the all the knowledge and help assistance in doing their business in there. Then another company, the, we are having, this is our team and people are very experienced and roughly 20 people are all the experts from the different field are on the board of the company or from who are helping the people in setting particularly new startups uh, to coordinate or to help them then another one i will take one the, <clears throat> 
टू थ्री मिनट्स रफली वन वन ईयर बैक आई हैव कम टू आई एम ऑन द बोर्ड ऑफ दिस कंपनी दिस एग्री बिड दिस इज बेसिकली ई मार्केटिंग प्लेटफॉर्म दे आर प्रोवाइडिंग टू द फार्मर्स ई मार्केटिंग प्लेटफॉर्म एंड दिस इज दे हैव डन रफली फोर हंड्रेड करोर्स ऑफ बिजनेस विद इन अयर एंड रिसेंटली दे हैव अट्रैक्टेड अ फंड आउटसाइड Uh, the, uh, the, some uh, Saudi Arabia based funding agency they have found and they have been uh, uh, roughly valued about 500 crores business on the basis of they are going to get this funding in three tranches so uh, one and then one european uh, funding agency is also considering almost in finalized so this company is growing very rapidly and they are providing farmers certain this e platform for particular at this moment they are working they are uh, doing businesses in uh, mainly जो आपकी दालें वगैरह हैं इनमें काम कर रहे हैं एंड वेजिटेबल्स में सो दिस कंपनी इज आल्सो डूइंग वेरी द ग्रोथ स्ट्रेटेजी एंड ट्रेजेक्टरी इज वेरी हाई दे आर वर्किंग एंड द पीपल बेसिकली द एडवांटेज इज दिस द फार्मर्स आर नॉट पेइंग एनीथिंग दे आर गेटिंग फुल एडवांटेज नो बिचोलिया काइंड ऑफ बीच थिंग्स दे आर गेटिंग द मनी विद इन ए मंथ और लेस देन ए मंथ एंड नो ट्रांसपोर्टेशन चार्जेज एंड दे are providing all advisory services to them so this is one company uh, i am associated and then they are uh, helping them in reducing their cost also and uh, even they are helping if certain kind of finances are required so uh, they are uh, helping the farmers and agripreneurs to uh, this uh, this this company and journey you can see this uh, only 2021 uh, they have started their uh, businesses and now they are roughly they have done roughly 400 crores of business in this agri using this e platform so this agri so this is what i wanted to share with the uh, future uh, entrepreneurs or the people who want to diversify into agri uh, products so this is uh, what i want to say thank you thank you so much uh, thank you so much sir for such a wonderful and insightful session Thank you for elaborating us with the huge and promising world of agri pranership, sir. We would like to have your presentation also for our participants that our team will contact to you. And yeah, without definitely. any without any doubt, our participants must have enjoyed the and learned from this session. Uh, so uh, uh, we have. I have yes, given my in my presentation. Uh, I have my contact number. My number you people are having, and I I have given my email D N D. You can refer anything if any participants is having any question or thing. You can mail me, and definitely I will uh, try to reach them, and I will try to give them solution or that kind of things. Okay, ma'am. Okay, sir. Uh, so, sir, actually now uh, our participants has asked two three questions. So, yeah. with your permission, shall I ask? Yeah, please, please, please. yeah so uh, like first question is so you mentioned about some wood products hmm. uh, so what are the areas in wood and wood products uh, we can have pronership so please elaborate that thing see sir. the furniture is the first thing the wood products if you know it is you know this uh, furniture is going to be uh, we see uh, has potential area previously it was not a uh, kind of it was a local product now is the uh, if you will see the furniture has taken and the, it's a very costly products so the furniture is having uh, and many uh, these uh, artifacts which are has the uh, export potentials so these are the uh, two areas where you can develop a business okay sir uh, thank you so much sir so another question is like uh, uh, it's a uh, basic question sir like somebody has a idea to start a startup and he hmm. or she does not know like what if that is feasible or not and how it's then that's going to work so how to take the first step like he has See, an idea but hmm. uh, yeah ha uh, ha uh. i will share with you see the first thing the uh, anybody who is going to the business definitely is a literate person so nowadays if you will go to google or the, the kind of a first he has to select what kind of a whether where he has to set up his business what kind of a capital is available with him and what kind of a skill available with him so he can go if he is having those three things in into his mind he can he, even if he is a rural kind of person he doesn't know the ideas of business he can go to nearby krishi vigyan kendra or the university or the nabard center they will help you uh, in developing or the identify 
find the what kind of a business. Another thing you can do survey on the net or Google where these are and the manage is uh, uh, helping people in uh, setting up startups. So these are few and nearby you Kitsi Vigyan Kendra is available in the each district. So you can go there, you can find and they will connect you to the right person. And then we are also there. If somebody wants to con uh, 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 connect with us, we can help them. We can identify to what kind of a business will be profitable or what kind of viable business for them. Okay, sir. So with this, uh, I would like to end the session, sir. With the thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much for joining and uh, elaborating uh, with such a new area of agripreneurship. So we are grateful to have you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm, I'm very thankful to the organizers and the teams for giving me the opportunity and uh, uh, to share my uh, ideas with you. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. Thank it was a so wonderful much, experience sir. working with you. Thanks Thank a lot. You, sir. Thanks a lot. Uh, now, so here comes the end of this session. So I would like to call upon our, uh, our next guest, for the next session, we have with us Dr. Shankar Goenka, who is the Chief Architect and Managing Director of Wow Private uh, Wow Factors Private India Limited. On special request of our, of our participants, we are here again to listen to this eminent personality like Goenka, sir. Uh, so uh, there are certain things that you all must not be knowing about, sir. Uh, sir was born in a well-settled business family, out, uh, but in 2016, he decided to quit their pan-India business and set up his own successful business. Um, Sir has been a NCC cadet, a uh, stage artist, a hockey player, mm -hmm. an avid researcher, and an inquisitive learner, learner also. Sir is a strong believer of the mentor-mentor relationship and has specialized himself in whole brain thinking concept That's also. Sir is highly skillful resource person with his experience in leadership, behavioral training, soft skills, strategic planning, sales and marketing, uh, time management, mm -hmm. goal setting, mm -hmm. Work-life balance, meditation, career counseling, team building, team dynamics, conscious and subconscious mind. So, my friends, can we uh, we can have our super Sunday motivation and learning today with Goenka, sir. So, with this background, I would like to invite sir to podium. Welcome back, sir. We are more than happy to listen to you. Stage is all yours, sir. Sir, can you hear me? Yeah, one second, ma'am. Yes, sir. Good morning, everyone. So please unmute yourself. Yes. Yeah, I have unmuted. Yeah. So good morning. Namaste. How are you, ma'am? Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. We are absolutely fine, sir. Okay. Very good. Thank you very much for inviting me once again. Thank you, so, sir. So again, my participant, I uh, I do not know if, if it's the same crowd or different crowd or what it is. So so just so so please again help me to understand what is. Because I could, I was hearing to the previous uh, speaker. So please help me to understand that in your mind, what is the question that you have to ask? I think that the agriculture in the field, agriculture, as I said, in agriculture, there is a culture. And there is no culture in agriculture. So the most important thing is that we know what we have to do, what we have to know, what we have to know, what we have to know. और हमें क्या करने की इच्छा शक्ति है सो कैन यू प्लीज हेल्प मी टू अंडरस्टैंड कि आपके मन में ऐसे यू कैन पुट इट ऑन अ चैट बॉक्स एंड देन आई कैन आंसर यू सो चैट इज एनेबल्ड एंड पार्टिसिपेंट्स कैन अनम्यूट आल्सो सो इफ दे हैव एनी क्वेश्चंस दे विल डेफिनेटली आस्क सो आई रिक्वेस्ट यू टू प्लीज स्टार्ट विद मोटिवेटिंग अस सो दैट वी कैन हैव सम क्वेश्चंस इन आवर माइंड्स Hello, sir. sir are Hello. Are you coming? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Aditya Ji, do you want to ask something? No, I am speaking as P. Bansal, Sispal Bansal. Yes, tell me, sir. Sir, I want to... I am planning to... Uh, thinking of uh, starting Agro Service Center. Hmm. in NCR 
where i can i'm plan, uh, thinking to start the uh, hire, custom hiring center rather mm. as well as uh, other related agriculture uh, services like mm. uh, vermi composting mushrooming mm. like that mm. Need this to... is the project i i am thinking for that तो मैं तो मैं हाँ तो मेरा पहला आपको सजेशन क्या है सर हेलो कैन यू हियर मी या या जी तो मेरा पहला निवेदन क्या है सर कि पहले तो आप वेल well डिफाइन करें कि मुझे एग्जैक्टली exactly क्या करना है जैसे आपने कहा कि वर्मी कंपोस्ट और फिर आपने कहा मशरूमिंग ये दोनों बिल्कुल अलग अलग चीजें हैं या तो समझो यदि आपको किसान सेंटर बनाना है या एग्री बेस बनाना है तो उसके कई चीजें हैं एक है प्रोक्योरमेंट एक है सेलिंग एक है कनेक्शन एक है एग्री आउटपुट एक है एग्रोकेमिकल्स एक है फर्टिलाइजर एक है इक्विपमेंट तो उसके कई सारे वर्टिकल हैं। तो मुझे लगता है कि ये सारे एक्चुअली आपको पता है एग्रीकल्चर के ज्यादा सीजनल काम होता है एग्रीकल्चर के अंदर आजकल सीजनल खत्म हो गया बारह महीने का काम पर आपको आपको अपनी प्लानिंग ठीक करनी पड़ेगी क्योंकि एग्रीकल्चर एक ऐसी चीज है जो 12 महीने चलती है आपको खाना 12 महीने तीन दिन चाहिए एग्रीड वो फिर टेक्निक और डिफरेंट है फार्मिंग टेक्निक डिफरेंट है जिसमें सारा साल चलता है एग्रो सर्विस सेंटर में मेरा ज्यादा कंसर्न था रिलेटेड टू इक्विपमेंट सप्लाई ऑफ इक्विपमेंट लाइक like दैट जैसे तो जो, जैसे तो जो लोग नहीं नहीं तो जो लोग वेजिटेबल्स उगाते हैं वो साल भर उगाते हैं ना सर वो तो तीन महीने की क्रॉप है साल में चार क्रॉप लेते हैं तो मेरा आपसे क्या निवेदन है सर कि आप कोई भी काम करें पहले उसको वेल well रिसर्च करें हम क्या करते हैं सर कि हमने क्या करा कि भाई मेरे गांव में मेरे आस में राम कुमार एक तरीके से काम कर रहा है मैं भी वैसे करूँ आपने कॉपी पेस्ट नहीं करना है आपने क्या करना है आपने ये देखना है कि भैया मैं मेरा काम अलग तरीके से कैसे करूं और नएपन से क्या करूं और मेरे को खेती को देखिए अभी क्या है आपने कभी इस बात को सोचा है सर कि आज अमेरिका में कोई दस हजार एकड़ कर रहा है कोई ऑस्ट्रेलिया में दो हजार एकड़ कर रहा है न्यूजीलैंड में तीन हजार एकड़ कर रहा है हम क्यों दो पांच दस एकड़ पे सिमट गए आज आप सोचो सर डेली एनसीआर जैसी जगह में जो दिल्ली से यदि आप 30-40 किलोमीटर बाहर जाओ तो आपको पच्चीस हजार रुपए एकड़ से लेकर एक लाख रुपए एकड़ तक एक साल के लिए खेत किराए पे मिलता है बराबर है ना अब इससे सस्ता दुनिया में क्या होगा आपको दिल्ली जैसी जगह में लाख रुपए महीने का तो घर नहीं मिले और आपको एक एकड़ जगह मिल रही है तो आपने जो आपने जो प्लानिंग करनी शीशपाल जी साहब आपने जो प्लानिंग करनी है वो ये ध्यान में रख के करनी है कि भैया मैं मेरी दुकान को एक साल कैसे चलू और मैं ऐसा नया क्या करूं जो दूसरे लोग नहीं कर रहे हैं तो जैसे आज समझो फॉर एग्जांपल हम लोग ड्रोन बनाते हैं फार्मिंग स्प्रिंग के लिए तो शुरू में जब हमने आज एक साल पहले शुरू करा तो तब पता लगा था ये तो ड्रोन खाली आप आप एक छिड़काव कर सकते हो दो छिड़काव कर सकते हो महीने में सौ दिन चलेगा कि नहीं चलेगा डेढ़ सौ दिन चलेगा कि नहीं चलेगा आज तो हम ड्रोन पूरे साल साल चला रहे हैं आपकी आवाज नहीं आ रही सर म्यूट हो गया शिषपाल जी आपका जो रिगार्डिंग लैंड जो आप बता रहे हैं ना कि लैंड अवेलेबिलिटी चाहिए और रेजिडेंस चाहिए बेसिकली आई एम रिजाइडिंग इन फरीदाबाद और मेरे पास लैंड भी है यहाँ फरीदाबाद दिल्ली नियर बाई में तो वो इशू उन लैंड को ही बेसिकली जो फार्मर है वो मेरे फ्रेंड के फादर हैं तो वो लैंड अवेलेबल है उसमें कोई इशू नहीं है और सर्विस सेंटर में मैं आई एम ऑल्सो थिंकिंग ऑफ टेकिंग ड्रोन एज वेल कि ड्रोन को भी हम सर्विस दे सकते हैं मेरा मेरा क्या निवेदन है सर कि आप सर्विस तो दे सकते हो पर आपको सर्विस जैसे आपने कहा फरीदाबाद में मैं भी आपके फरीदाबाद में ही हूँ अच्छा 
और इस समय हम लोग करीब 500 ड्रोन उड़ा रहे हैं हरियाणा में पंजाब में राजस्थान में मध्य प्रदेश में गुजरात के अंदर हम दुनिया का सबसे बड़ा ड्रोन स्प्रेइंग प्रोजेक्ट कर रहे हैं पर मेन मेन कहानी किस पे आती है सर कि आप उसको कर कैसे रहे हो आपने कहा जी मेरे पास खेती है मैं काम करना चाहता हूँ आप लीजिए मेरे से ड्रोन मैं आपको पूरे साल का काम देता हूँ तो मैंने आपसे कहा कि जब हमने ड्रोन की सर्विस चालू करी तब ये था कि कोई कहता है यार ये तो सौ दिन भी नहीं उड़ेगा यार ये पचास दिन भी नहीं उड़ेगा पर हमने क्या करा अपना क्रॉप पैटर्न को पढ़ा कि आज शुगर कैन है तो यहाँ पर होगा जो सब्जी वाले हैं वो बारह महीने लेंगे फिर उसके बाद में मैंने कपास पे शिफ्ट करा धान पे करा मक्के पे करा इस पे करा तो यदि आप कोई भी व्यापार करेंगे और जितने भी मेरे लोग सुन रहे हैं मेरे को मैं आपको यही कहना चाहूंगा कि व्यापार मतलब कल को देखना जिंदगी में सर बंसल साहब आप तो मेरे से बहुत सीनियर आदमी हैं आपने देखा होगा सी हुज़ दिस शौर्या हेलो रघुराम रतिरामन जी कुछ बोल रहे हैं आप maybe sir it was uh, unintentional and uh, we can continue sir okay to bansal sahab mera kehne ka matlab kya hai ki jo aaj hamara yuva bhi hai yuva khub karna chahta hai usme energy bhi hai par main baat ye ki jab tak yuva kal ko nahi pehchan payega tab tak wo mar khaye sir main sab ka time le raha hu mere ko aap contact number de sakte hain to i want to meet you basically to mera 9811229551 मैंने चैट बॉक्स में लिख दिया है ठीक तो है। आप मेरा नंबर ले सकते हैं और मेरे से बात करके और आपने कोई भी युवा है मेरा आपसे क्या निवेदन है कि आप पहले अपनी प्रतिभा को अपने पास से जानो दूसरा ये कोई चक्कर में मत पड़ो जी मेरे पास में पैसे नहीं है पैसे की इस समय कोई दुनिया में कमी नहीं है आपका प्रोजेक्ट ठीक होना चाहिए आप उसे मेहनत कर सको उसकी प्लानिंग ठीक हो बाकी सब चीज आपको मिल जाएगी हाँ जी कोई दूसरा सवाल रघुराम जी आप कुछ बोलना चाह रहे हैं क्वेश्चन so basically i wanted to involve myself in you know uh, technically uh, part of uh, you know agri as an agri prana so you so are based where i am based in bangalore by uh, my native is in tamil nadu no in bangalore can you come to hospet hospet yeah i can hmm. so so we are starting a drone program in hospet from next week all right you can join us there you can take care of the technical part of the whole program so we are going to have 50 drones over there and okay. we are going to do spray in karnataka in tamil nadu in andhrana andhra and telangana and you can All take right. care of the technical part of it sir if you really enjoy doing technical things all right so how to contact you sir so my number is there 9811229551 and you can send me yours uh i'm not uh, able to see that uh, number where you had uh, pinged it is oh sorry 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 it is one second uh, madam wo kaise karte hain to all acha to everyone hari bata sir sir it's it's done to everyone sir you can uh, type uh, next yeah ab can you see it now sir yes uh, sir doctor i i'll i'll get in touch with you doctor yeah. second thing any entrepreneur want to work in karnataka or tamil nadu they want they can join us there and and we can make you entrepreneur we can give you job opportunity you can work with us at every level that's great that's great thank you doctor okay welcome sir welcome any other question people have so please first thing what i want to do is i want to show you a small video and i'm sure everyone should be able so can you give me a uh, right ma'am sir i screen think it's share. given sir you can share your screen sir no it is saying host disabled participate screen sharing so you need to make me co host first and then you do it uh yeah please try it now sir i think it's given sir okay fair enough
Are you able to hear the sound, ma'am? Yes, yes, sir, yes, sir, absolutely, sir. So, Hello, sir. How was it? बहुत बढ़िया सर. Fantastic. So I just I just wanted to show you that we make drones, and then then when you make drones, you just you just show it there, and then you can spray pesticides, you can spray weedicide, germicide, fungicide, और और मैं कहता हूँ कि drone में मैं हम इसलिए आए, because के बीच तीन social angle हैं. पहला एंगल ये है कि भारत में अट्ठावन हजार किसान सेब सांप के काटने से मरता है फिफ्टी थाउजेंड फार्मर डाई ड्यू टू स्नेक बाइट इन फार्म लैंड करीब फोर लैक पीपल गेट इन्फेक्टेड ड्यू टू इनहेल ऑफ पेस्टिसाइड दवाई के सूंघने से रघुराम सर चार लाख लोग बीमार होते हैं फोर लैख पीपल एंड देर आंटरप्रेनरशिप मॉडल वेयर वी गिव दैम ड्रोन दे कैन गो बैक दे कैन लर्न वी ट्रेन दैम वी गिव दैम वर्क एंड दे कैन अर्न फिफ्टी थाउजेंड टू एटी थाउजेंड रुपीज in a year so that's the kind of program we do and it saves pollution ye mother earth ko bachata hai water health ko bachata hai water air pollution ko bachata hai this how it works shubham sharma ji aap kuch puchna chahte hain reena ji reena sir aap kuch puchna chahte hain ha sir good evening sir good morning sir good morning ji uh, sir hum log madhubani bihar se mein situated है और मैं और मेरी वाइफ दोनों ही मशरूम प्रोडक्शन और उसके वैल्यू एडिशन पे काम कर रहे हैं बहुत बढ़िया लेकिन हम लोगों को मार्केटिंग की काफी प्रॉब्लम हो रही है तो इस पे सर आप थोड़ा गाइड आपके पास कितना माल है अभी सर तो लगभग तीस चालीस किलोग्राम होगा अभी क्योंकि यहाँ पर बिकता नहीं है तो हम लोग कम बना रहे हैं बट वी कैन हम लोग इन्हांस कर सकते हैं इसको हमारे पास महिलाओं की पूरी टीम है सर मैं कितना इनहेंस कर सकते हैं पे भी काम कर रहे हैं 500 किलोग्राम पिकल्स पर मंथ बना सकते हैं सर हम लोग इसके ऊपर और जैसा गाइड करें नहीं नहीं ऐसा है कि देखो 500 किलोग्राम से क्या है सर ट्रांसपोर्ट वायबिलिटी नहीं आएगी ओके यदि आप एक टन से दो टन बनाएं तो मैं आपका पूरा का पूरा मशरूम बाय कर सकता हूँ और उसको अच्छे दाम में बेचकर आपको उसका बेनिफिट दिला सर मुझे एक रुपया नहीं चाहिए पर मैं आपका मार्केट लिंकेज बना दूंगा पर मार्केट लिंकेज में क्या है कि 50 किलो की ट्रांसपोर्टेशन नहीं पोसाएगी ऐसा मुझे लगता है ठीक है सर हम लोग ऑयस्टर मशरूम और ऑयस्टर मशरूम पे ज्यादा काम करते हैं वो एक सर कंस्टेंट है सर मार्केट को लेकर नहीं तो क्या दाम में बनाते हैं हम लोग का कॉस्टिंग सर लगभग फिफ्टी रुपी पर किलोग्राम तक आ जाता है तो आप मुझे पता करके बताओ आपको दिल्ली का भेजने का भाड़ा कितना आता है ठीक है बस आपसे सर मिलना चाहेंगे तो मिल सकते हैं ना सर बेटा मैं तो दिल्ली में हूँ बट आप मेरा नंबर ले लीजिए व्हाट्सएप पे इस पे बात करिए तो आपको दिक्कत नहीं होगी ठीक है सर थैंक यू सर थैंक यू है ना तो आपका मैं क्या करता हूँ 
कि आप नहीं तो ये काम कर सकते कि आपने 50 किलो मशरूम लिया और 50 किलो मशरूम को आपने पैक करा आ, और क्या करा उसको वहां से जो ट्रेन आती है कौन सी ट्रेन आती है आपके यहाँ से यहाँ से काफी सारी ट्रेनें हैं स्वतंत्रता सेनानी है और भी ट्रेन वहां पे कोई राजधानी वगैरह आती है हाँ राजधानी भी सर पटना में पटना में इसको बोर्ड कर सकते हैं हम लोग तो कितना दूर है वहां से पटना पटना फोर आवर्स की जर्नी है तो आप उस चक्कर में मत पड़ो आप मुझे बताओ कि आपके मधुबनी से दिल्ली कितनी जल्दी पहुंच सकता है वहां पे एसी टू टायर का कंपार्टमेंट होता है एसी थ्री टायर का उसके अटेंडेंट से बात करिए उसको सौ दो सौ रुपए दीजिए और वो आपका पार्सल देगा हम यहाँ पे ले लेंगे तो आपका पचास किलो मशरूम आप आज भिजवा दीजिए थैंक यू सर थैंक यू थैंक यू सर ठीक है ना आपका बैंक डिटेल दे दीजिएगा हम आपको पैसे भिजवा देंगे ठीक है सर पहले पहले आपको पैसे भिजवाएंगे फिर आप माल चढ़ाइएगा ठीक है सर हम बिल्कुल आपसे बात करते हैं जी ठीक है ना चलिए आपका प्रॉब्लम सॉल्व हाँ जी सुप्रिया रतन जी की तो आप मेरा नंबर ले लीजिएगा सर और आप मुझे डाल दीजिएगा सुप्रिया रतन जी ने लिखा है कि सर कैन यू प्रोवाइड सम अपॉर्चुनिटी फॉर बी एग्रीकल्चर स्टूडेंट मैडम मैं तीन दिन से एग्रीकल्चर यूनिवर्सिटीज में बात कर रहा हूँ अलग अलग जगह और मुझे अभी तक नहीं समझ में आया है कि बीएससी एग्रीकल्चर को कहाँ दिक्कत है इस समय कितनी जॉब अपॉर्चुनिटीज हैं मैं आपको बता नहीं सकता टू ऑल माय ऑडियंस मैं आपको हाथ जोड़ के बताना चाहता हूं कि इस समय बहुत हाईएस्ट अपॉर्चुनिटी है फॉर एग्रीकल्चर डॉक्टर अरुण चंदन साहब आप एग्री करते हैं मेरी बात से नहीं करते बिल्कुल बिल्कुल सर हमें भी एग्रोनोमिस्ट नहीं मिल रहे हैं हम ढूंढ रहे हैं हाँ आप नहीं सर मैं मैं इस समय दुनिया का सबसे बड़ा ड्रोन प्रोजेक्ट चला रहा हूं जी और मेरे को बच्चे ही नहीं मिल रहे हैं और इस समय सर मेरे पास ऐसा प्रोविजन है कि जहां पर मैं बच्चों को खाली दस परसेंट पैसा देना है नब्बे परसेंट में उनको छह परसेंट से भारत सरकार से दिला सकता हूं और वो अपना रोजगार कर सकते हैं आई एम एक्सट्रीमली फेल टू अंडरस्टैंड कि लोग करें नौकरी नहीं है सर बी एस सी फॉर फॉरेस्ट्री प्राची राजी हर चीज में अपॉर्चुनिटी है आपने मोबाइल फोन को छोड़कर आप सही तरीके से पता करिए कि हमें जाना क्या आप क्या करते हैं आज का यूथ दिन भर मोबाइल पर यूट्यूब पर इस पे उस पे लगा रहता है तो अपॉर्चुनिटी देखने का टाइम कहाँ है आप अपना रिज्यूमे मेरा ईमेल आईडी मैंने ऊपर दिया है आप मुझे भेजिए और मेरी टीम में अनुपम जी है वो आपको बताएंगे आप तीन चार महीने का इंटर्न करिए दी आपने काम अच्छा किया हम आपको रख लेंगे जितने भी बच्चे मेरे को सुन रहे हैं एग्रीकल्चर के सारे मेरे पास आ जाओ तीन महीने के लिए इंटर्नशिप के लिए गिव जॉब टू एवरीवन डॉक्टर गोइनका कैन आई आस्क सम वन क्वेश्चन प्लीज सर प्लीज सर प्लेजर वी वर्क ऑन मेडिसिनल प्लांट सेक्टर इन इंडिया सो वी आर वी आर प्रमोटिंग कल्टिवेशन एंड कंजर्वेशन ऑफ मेडिसिनल प्लांट वेरी गुड सो सो we are actually suffering from uh, certain problems like we are unable to find out uh, what area is under cultivation of medicinal plants and definitely for the inputs you are already doing this uh, drone project mm-hmm. can we use your technology to make an assessment of the area under cultivation and uh, yes, other yes, aspects yes yes main aapko jo de sakta hu sir main aapke farm ka pura ka pura soil management uska health management प्लांट का क्रॉप हेल्थ मैनेजमेंट का सॉल्यूशन दे सकता हूं और आपको मैं वीकली बेसिस पे दे सकता हूं सो व्हाट आई विल डू आई विल आई विल स्कैन योर लैंड बाय सैटेलाइट और सैटेलाइट से स्कैन करके मैं आपको एग्जैक्टली exactly बता सकता हूं कि कौन सा आपका ग्रीन एरिया है कौन सा आपका ऑरेंज एरिया है कौन सा आपका रेड एरिया है और रेड एरिया में क्या क्या न्यूट्रिय की कमी है पानी की कमी है उसको आप ध्यान देंगे तो आपका प्रोडक्शन ज्यादा है और दूसरा आप आयुष मंत्रालय से जुड़िए आयुष मंत्रालय में जुड़कर आप मेडिसिनल प्लांट को प्रमोट करिए वहां यदि कोई दिक्कत आ रही तो वहां पे कटौत साहब है उनसे बात करिए और आप अपने वहां पर मेडिसिनल प्लांट को अभी भारत सरकार ने कहा है कि हर घर में 20 मेडिसिनल प्लांट लगेंगे तो आप तो सोच ही नहीं सकते कि भारत की एक करोड़ की पॉपुलेशन में समझो यदि बीस करोड़ घर है तो आप तो ये जीवन चला जाएगा हमारा देने के लिए No, I come from Ministry Ayush. I represent National Medicinal Plants Board. That's what I am asking you. 
आई एम सॉरी मैं तो <laughs> मैं तो स्कूल चलाता हूँ सर गोइंका पब्लिक स्कूल्स के नाम से और ड्रोन बनाता हूँ तो मुझे आ, मैं बहुत एक्साइटेड हूँ मेडिसिनल प्लांट को लेके तो मैंने तो गवर्नमेंट को मिनिस्ट्री को ऑफर भी करा था कि जी मेरा स्कूल के सो सौ एकड़ के कैंपस हैं सब में आप मेडिसिनल प्लांट लगा दो आई आई वॉन्ट टू सर्व फ्री टू नेशन यू है कॉलेज इन स्कूल इन धर्मशाला ऑल्सो धर्मशाला में नहीं है सर अभी तो मेरे राजस्थान में कई जगह पर हैं पर मैं आपको जो है धर्मशाला में अभी हिमाचल में जाने वाला हूँ अपने जो शिवजी महाराज हैं ऊपर धर्मशाला में मैकलोडगंज में वो बुला रहे हैं मैं वहां पे बहुत ट्रेनिंग करता हूँ सर सो आई कीप ऑन कमिंग देर अभी मैं अभी मैं पढ़ा के आ रहा हूँ पिछले हफ्ते में था आई की सो मैं बेसिकली मोटिवेशनल स्पीकर हूँ सर सो आई गो टू मेनी पार्ट ऑफ द कंट्रीज एंड आई वर्क विद मेनी मिनिस्ट्रीज टू स्पीक की खुश कैसे रहे तो मेरा जो टॉपिक है वो हैप्पीनेस का है so so I help people how to be happy in life sir so, wonderful so, sir wonderful मेरा नंबर आपके पास में है मैंने उस पर लिखा है जी जी नाइन एट जी डबल वन डबल टू जी नाइन डबल फाइव वन जी जी सर आई लिव इन धर्मशाला माई ऑफिस इज इन जोगिंदर नगर इन मंडी सो आई लुक आफ्टर नॉर्दर्न रीजन पंजाब हरियाणा चंडीगढ़ उत्तर प्रदेश उत्तराखंड अभी मेरे को अभी मेरे को हिमाचल प्रदेश से ये आया था कि हम कैसे ड्रोन के द्वारा स्प्रे करें क्योंकि जो एप्पल फार्मिंग है वहां पे पानी लाने का ले जाने का बहुत खर्चा है और वो खर्चे को हम कैसे आ, कम करें और आ, क्योंकि स्टेप फार्मिंग होती है तो उसके में हम कैसे कंट्रीब्यूट करें सो दैट इज व्हाट वी हैव अ प्लान टू डू इट इन हिमाचल सर सर इन अदर वन मोर क्वेश्चन यू सी वी हैव मोस्ट ऑफ द एरियाज अंडर फॉरेस्ट इन हिमाचल प्रदेश सो so will this drone technology be helpful to to know uh, the status of biodiversity in forest areas also do oh, yes, can 100%. we can we can oh, we do yes, something 100%. with gis also yes 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 100% we can do that plus we can do the spray seed spraying kar sakte hain hum bullet farming kara sakte hain hum aapko assessment karke de sakte hain aur sabse bada challenge kya hai sir jo hamari apple farming hai एप्पल के अंदर दवाइयां चूंकि इतनी महंगी होती है और आदमी ऊपर से नीचे से छिड़कता है तो पहुंच नहीं पाता है ड्रोन के माध्यम से भी हम हम उसको फोकस करके स्कैन करके स्प्रिंग करेंगे तो वो अच्छा जाएगा सर ठीक है सर उस विषय में ये खैर ये एप्पल का एरिया मेरा डोमेन नहीं है बट मेडिसिनल प्लांट्स में डेफिनेटली आई वुड लाइक टू साइन वन एम यू विद यू तो आपका आपका नंबर दे दीजिएगा सर डॉक्टर साहब और सेवन जीरो वन एट डबल जीरो ठीक है डॉक्टर साहब तो ऑडियंस मैं आपको एक बात और बताना चाहता हूँ कि इस प्लेटफॉर्म पे मैं भी नया हूँ और डॉक्टर अरुण चंदन साहब भी आए हुए हैं उधर रघुरमन साहब भी आए थे और बंसल साहब भी आए थे मैंने अभी तक चार लोगों से बात करी और चारों लोगों में नई अपॉर्चुनिटी तलाशी तो मैं ये कहता हूँ कि एयरटेल ने करोड़ों रुपए खर्च कर दिए ये समझाने के लिए कि बात करने से बात बनती है यूथ का सबसे बड़ा चैलेंज ये है कि वो बात नहीं करता कोई से तो मेरा ये कहना है कि आपके घर में आपके पेरेंट्स हैं आपके टीचर्स हैं सोसाइटी में इतने सीनियर लोग हैं उनसे कम्युनिकेशन ओपन रखिए भगवान आपको अपने आप रास्ता दिखाएगा मेरा कहना है कि देखो किताब जो आप कॉलेज में स्कूल में पढ़ते हो ना डिग्रियों से कुछ नहीं होता डिग्रियों से आपको एंट्री मिल सकती है पर काम आपको आपके व्यवहार से ही मिलेगा तो प्रीति मैम आप जो आप जो मुझे मोटिवेशन की बात करती है मैं हरदम यही कहता हूं डॉक्टर साहब कि ये बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है कि हम कम्युनिकेशन ओपन रखें अभी जैसे डॉक्टर अरुण साहब ने कहा मैं गारंटी कर सकता हूं ये हजारों युवाओं को रोजगार दिला सकते हैं और चूंकि सर मिनिस्ट्री से हैं तो मैं यूथ को बताना चाहता हूं मिनिस्ट्री का ऑलरेडी एक प्रोग्राम है जहां पर हर घर में बीस मेडिसिनल प्लांट आए यदि मैं कहता हूं आप उन बीस मेडिसिनल प्लांट को सप्लाई करें उसका पैसा आपको भारत सरकार देगी और यदि आपने उसका मेंटेनेंस करा और यदि एक यूथ ने 50 घर से 100 घर भी संभाले तो आप सोच लो वो आराम से अपनी जिंदगी गुजार सकता है तो इस समय ना अवसर की कमी है ना काम की कमी है खाली आपको अपने घर में ना बैठकर खाली मोबाइल पे यूट्यूब बकवास ना देकर इंस्टाग्राम पे कुछ ना होकर आपको काम के लिए बाहर जाना है लोगों से बात करनी है अपॉर्चुनिटीज तलाश करनी है और आपको ईश्वर आपको ऑटोमेटिकली काम देगा ऐसा मैडम मेरा मानना है अब इससे लिखा है कि सर इज देर एनी अपॉर्चुनिटी फॉर ड्रॉप आउट स्टूडेंट और बी एस सी एग्रीकल्चर अरे भैया जो दसवीं का ड्रॉप आउट हो उसके लिए अपॉर्चुनिटी है आप तो बी एस सी हो यार मेरे पास आ जाओ सर इज देर एनी अपॉर्चुनिटीज 
कोई भी बच्चा जिसने टेंथ क्लास पास करा है मैडम आज के बाद में आप जो भी होस्ट करें जो भी बच्चा आपसे पूछे मेरे पास तो आप, मेरे पास आ जाए मेरे पास इस समय अस्सी हजार जॉब अवेलेबल है मुझे लोग नहीं मिल रहे गुड आफ्टरनून सर डॉक्टर शंकर गोयंका सर दिस साइड डॉक्टर डीपीएस बडवाल फाउंडर जस्ट एग्रीकल्चर नमस्कार सर नमस्कार जी सर आई थिंक मैं काफी देर से आपको सुन रहा हूँ मैंने परसों भी आपका लेक्चर सुना सो so, uh, हम ऐसा कुछ प्लान करते हैं लाइक अरुण सर से भी मेरी अभी थोड़ी देर पहले बात हो रही थी तो हम एक कुछ प्रोग्राम प्लान करते हैं थ्रू अवर प्लेटफॉर्म बिकॉज वी हैव ऑल्सो एम ओ यूज विद मोर देन नाइनटी एग्रीकल्चर यूनिवर्सिटीज अक्रॉस इंडिया सो कुछ स्टूडेंट्स के लिए प्लान करते हैं ताकि वो इंटर्नशिप भी कर सकें और ड्रोन के लिए भी सर आपके साथ हम क्लैब जरूर करना चाहते हैं सो दैट स्टूडेंट्स कैन ऑल्सो गेट द अपॉर्चुनिटीज फॉर जॉब्स इंटर्नशिप्स एज वेल एज फार्मर्स भी इससे बेनिफिट ले सकें सर मैं आपसे क्या कह रहा हूँ जी इस समय में गुजरात हरियाणा राजस्थान महाराष्ट्र उत्तर प्रदेश कर्नाटका तमिलनाडु केरला आंध्रा के अंदर दुनिया का सबसे बड़ा स्प्रिंग प्रोजेक्ट कर रहा हूँ आप मुझे बोलो गोयंका साहब मेरे पास सौ बच्चे हैं कल भेज दो मुझे जिस एरिया में आपके पास हूं पर मेन बात क्या है क्या है सर कि वो बच्चे की इच्छा शक्ति हुई यार मुझे काम करना है ये सर इंडिया में आई थिंक आज की सबसे बड़ी दिक्कत है हम भी जब देखते हैं सर जिस परेश सर एक बात और करना चाहूंगा मैं जी जी देखो हमारे हमारी जो एज है जिस ऑर्गेनाइजेशन से या जिस परिवार से या जिस प्लेटफॉर्म पे आजकल हम लोग हैं ये हमारी मॉरल ड्यूटी और रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी है कि हम इसको प्रॉब्लम न समझ के अपॉर्चुनिटी करें हम 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 जब हम जब <coughs> सर हमारे सामने भी ये दिक्कत थी हम भी सोचते थे चलो काम पर मैं क्या कहना चाह रहा हूं कि जो यूथ है यदि हम उसको राइट right तरीके से मोटिवेट करेंगे तो वो काम बहुत करना चाहता है सर पर मुझे लगता है कि यूथ को हम राइट right इंफॉर्मेशन न देकर खाली ब्लेम गेम में लग मैं बचपन से देखता आया हूं सर कि हमारे देश में कोई पिता अपने बच्चों को ये नहीं कहता बेटा तू बड़ा बन जा तू टाटा बन जा तू बिड़ला बन जा हमारे पेरेंट्स हमें क्या कहते सारे गधे चराएगा किसी लायक नहीं है कोई काम का नहीं है वर्मा जी का लड़का देख शर्मा जी का लड़का देख तो बच्चा क्या सोचता है वास्तव में कोई लायक नहीं तो ये पेरेंट की भी जिम्मेदारी है हमारे टीचर्स की भी जिम्मेदारी है हमारी जो बिजनेस में है या जॉब में इस समय कुछ पोजिशन पे है ये उनकी भी मॉरल ड्यूटी है कि हम यूथ को राइट भाषा में बात करें एक सर वो एग्रीकल्चर यूनिवर्सिटीज का भी इसमें थोड़ा रोल है क्योंकि जो हम अगर देखें इंडिया में जितने स्टार्टअप्स हैं या जितनी बड़ी कंपनीज है ना अगर हम उसका एग्जांपल लें खैर 99 परसेंट सारे आईआईटी आईआईएम्स आई या बहुत बड़े बड़े बिजनेसमैन हैं वही रन कर रहे हैं कोई आपको ऐसा एग्रीकल्चर का पीएचडी बंदा या कोई ऐसा साइंटिस्ट वो नहीं मिलेगा जिसका अपना कोई बहुत बड़ा वेंचर हो एग्रीकल्चर का ये भी एक दिक्कत है क्योंकि नहीं नहीं मुझे एक बात आई सर वेंचर आप मेरे पास लोग भेजिए सर बाकी मैं सब करा दूंगा चलिए सर भेजते हैं जरूर <laughs> मतलब मतलब मैं बताता हूँ सर जैसे अभी मेडिसिनल प्लांट की मेरी सर से बात हुई मैं तो तब से सोचते लग गया कहाँ थे डॉक्टर साहब आज तक मुझे क्यों नहीं मिले <laughs> तो मैं क्या कह रहा हूँ सर अपॉर्चुनिटी हम सबके आस पास है देखिये सर मैं आपको एक बात बताना चाहूंगा पूरी ऑडियंस को और आपको भी सर की भगवान को अल्लाह को ऊपर वाले को हमने किसने नहीं देखा न मंदिर में न मस्जिद में न गुरुद्वारे में न चर्च में हमारा अनुभव ही भगवान है सो इफ यूर गुड एक्सपीरियंस वो भगवान है सो so, मेरा कहने का मतलब क्या है कि अपॉर्चुनिटी हम सबके आसपास है मैं सर आपको एक हाथ जोड़ के निवेदन करना चाहता हूं सर कि मेरी बात को आप बिल्कुल कॉपी पेस्ट कर लीजिए कि दुनिया में इस समय से बढ़िया कोई अपॉर्चुनिटी नहीं है सर काम करने की इतना काम दुनिया में अवेलेबल है पर मेरा क्या कहना है सर करने वाला नहीं है सर मैं आपके उत्तराखंड हिमाचल में बहुत ट्रेवल किया सर जब मैं जाता हूं चाहे मैं मंडी जाऊं या मैं आपके हिमाचल में ऊपर जाऊं या मैं उत्तराखंड में कॉर्बेट और आपके रामनगर और सब मनीला हो के आया कहते साहब हमारी हल्दी बहुत बेस्ट है साहब हमारा नमक बहुत अच्छा है साहब हमारे यहाँ का जो माल्टा आता है वो बहुत अच्छा है सब अच्छी बात है फिर मैं कहता अच्छा काम करो मुझे इसकी प्राइसिंग भेजो मुझे इसकी पैकिंग भेजो मुझे इसकी क्वान्टिटी भेजो कोई मुड़ के नहीं आता है सर सर आज मंडी में माल्टा एक रुपए का है और दिल्ली में सौ रुपए किलो है एक में चौबीस पीस चढ़ते हैं कांट वी डू अ गुड बिजनेस बट बात क्या है सर एक मिनट हो जाए एक मिनट पहले जो मैं कथा कर रहा हूं उसको होने दो नहीं ये जो जैसे गोविंद का साहब प्रेस जी ने कहा और जो 
आपके साथ जो काम करने की संभावनाएं हैं मैं अगले सेशन में मैं आई विल आई विल बी शोइंग डॉट्स इन वैल्यू चेन ऑफ मेडिसिनल प्लांट सेक्टर तो उसमें हर सेक्टर में अपॉर्चुनिटीज हैं एंड आपके साथ में कलेबोरेशन के बहुत सारे स्कोप हैं और परेश जी ने जैसे कहा कि रोल ऑफ सर एम ट्राइंग एक्चुअली यस सर हाँ जी तो जैसे प्रेश जी ने कहा कि रोल ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर यूनिवर्सिटीज या या जो भी हमारे लेजिटिमेट इंस्टीट्यूशन हैं डेफिनेटली uh, मैंने भी पिछले पांच छह सालों में नॉर्दर्न रीजन में खास करके हर जगह से हर जगह की स्ट्रेंथ्स वीकनेसेस को निकाला है और हमारा ऑब्जेक्टिव भी यही है uh, मैं यहाँ बता देता हूँ सर क्योंकि आपने कहा बीस प्लांट्स का बीस वाला प्रोग्राम तो हमारा अब निकल गया अभी हमारा जो कैंपेन है वो अश्वगंधा का है हर घर अश्वगंधा तो so, हम लोग जो है वो सबको बोल रहे हैं कि हर घर में अश्वगंधा लगाइए और उसका उपयोग करिए उसके लिए हम छोटे छोटे प्रोजेक्ट्स भी दो लाख प्लांट लगाने के लोगों को दे रहे हैं सीट भी प्रोवाइड कर रहे हैं इसके साथ साथ अर्लियर एक अप्रैल 2021 से पहले तक हम 140 मेडिसिनल प्लांट्स के लिए सब्सिडी देते थे स्टेट आयुष मिशन के थ्रू नो विच हैज बिन स्टॉप नो बट ऑन द अदर साइड हमारे बहुत सारे क्रिटेरियाज हैं रिसर्च के हैं जैसे आपके साथ में ड्रोन्स का काम करना है तो हमारी सेंटर सेक्टर स्कीम में वी हैव ऑप्शन टू गेट आर एंड प्रोजेक्ट्स सिमिलरली हमारे और काफी सारे प्रोजेक्ट्स हैं कॉन्फ्रेंसिस के हैं इंटरनेशनल ये प्रमोशन के प्रोजेक्ट्स हैं तो हम प्रेश आपके साथ और गोयनका जी के साथ मिल करके मैं नॉर्दर्न रीजन का तो मैं आपको एश्योर करा सकता हूँ कि उत्तर प्रदेश बहुत बड़ा राज्य है पंजाब हरियाणा से खेती की शुरुआत होती है और देश यहीं से शुरू शुरू होता है खेती के मामले में और जस्ट एग्रीकल्चर भी होशियारपुर में है ये भी एक अच्छी बात है मुझे अभी आज ही पता चला तो तो ये जो नॉर्दर्न रीजन का सारा काम है हम इसको एक नई दिशा के साथ में आगे बढ़ाते हैं और मैं तो कहूंगा कि ड्रोन्स के साथ साथ एआई का भी जो कहीं जैसे भी जो जो आप सुजेस्ट करते हो हमें चिंता यही है हम मेरे जो गैप्स है मैं अपने सेशन में क्विकली आपको दिखाऊंगा बिकॉज और उसमें से आप देखेंगे एग्रीकल्चर के हर एक सेगमेंट के व्यक्ति के लिए प्रोफेशनल के लिए अपॉर्चुनिटीज हैं अब टिश्यू कल्चर वाला ही ले लीजिए इतनी सारी क्वालिटी प्लांटिंग मटेरियल की डिमांड है बच्चे करते नहीं मैं कितने यूनिवर्सिटीज में इनके एकेडमिक काउंसिल्स में हूँ बॉटनी के खास करके मैं जाके पहला सवाल पूछता हूँ उस यूनिवर्सिटी में कि साहब ये बताइए पिछले दस बारह सालों में कितने बच्चे इंटरप्राइज इंटरप्रन्योर बने आपके यहाँ से जिन्होंने एम एस किया या पी किया और कहां पे बोटेनिकल्स का बिजनेस इस समय में यूएस में देख लीजिए जर्मन हमारे सबसे ज्यादा फ्रीज ड्राइड पाउडर ऑफ एलोवेरा खरीद रहा है और हम एलोवेरा बाबा रामदेव जी को बेच रहे पांच रुपए किलो बस सर, ये सर सर मैं यही 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 कनेक्टिंग पॉइंट मैं आपसे मिलूंगा सर और मेरे पास इतनी बड़ी बैंडविट सर मेरे पास एक स्कूल मेरे कनेक्ट में दस स्कूल प्रिंसिपल है कॉलेजेस हैं तो वीकेंड और ये जो आप कह रहे हैं सर दो लाख का टारगेट घरों में ये तो मैं अकेले मेरी टीम लगा के करा दूंगा सर सबके घर में अश्वगंधा पहुंचा दूंगा बहुत बढ़िया <laughs> मैं तो क्या करूंगा कि सर मैं मेरी जो जो मेरे करीब आपके आशीर्वाद से बीस एक लाख फॉलोअर हैं सर मैं तो सबको बोलूंगा भाई ये तुम्हारा ड्रीम प्रोजेक्ट है और एक सेवा भाव से काम करो अपने आप काम हो जाएगा सर अभी अभी देखिए सर एक चैट बॉक्स में मैसेज लिखा है कि गुड आफ्टरनून सर आई हैव डन माई मास्टर्स इन एग्रीकल्चर माई मास्टर रिसर्च वॉज बेस्ड ऑन कट फ्लावर्स कल्टिवेटेड इन नॉर्थ कश्मीर I want to boost this industry. अरे भैया कट फ्लावर की सबको फूल खूबसूरत लगते हैं और यदि कश्मीर से आया हुआ फूल होगा उसकी तो खुशबू अलग होगी तो सो so, अभी देखिए मेरे ख्याल से सर डॉक्टर साहब सबसे बड़ा डॉट है कनेक्टिंग द डॉट्स मेरे ख्याल से ये बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है तो तो सर इसके लिए जो नॉर्थ कश्मीर से जो आप कट फ्लावर्स करना चाहते हैं सेंड मी सम डिटेल एंड माई नंबर इज ऑलरेडी विद यू सो यू कैन मोर देन वेलकम टू टॉक टू मी एंड वी शूड टेक इट टेक इट आउट Sir, for physical training, I will get leave from the college after seven months. Can I contact you? Yes, sir. Anyone can contact me any time. You just need to send me message and whatever best I can do, I'll do it for you. एक लिखा है कि अजब सिंह जी ने please provide your contact number. मैंने ऊपर दिया है पर मैं जो है वापस से सबको देता हूँ. So ये मेरा contact. तो आप मुझे message कर देंगे. So I will definitely come back to you. डॉक्टर अरुण हाँ सर आपका नंबर ले लिया डॉक्टर साहब मैंने सेवन जीरो वन एट डबल जीरो वन जीरो टू सिक्स नाइन फोर एक मिनट डॉक्टर साहब नाइन फोर मेरा तो मन कर रहा है डॉक्टर साहब मैं आज ही शिफ्ट हो जाऊँ हिमाचल
आइए सर स्वागत आपको <laughs> मैं ग्लोडगंज और धर्मशाला के बीच बहुत सारे अच्छे अपार्टमेंट्स भी मिल रहे हैं यू कैन कम एंड परमानेंटली लिव हियर नॉट ए प्रॉब्लम जहां से वो रोप वे शुरू हुआ है ना उसके पास है तो मैं ग्लोडगंज में काफी ट्रेनिंग करता हूँ सर मैं वंडरफुल सर और दूसरा जो है पंकज जी आपका क्या सवाल है तो सर आई एम करेंटली परसिंग एम एस सी एग्रोनॉमिक्स फ्रॉम पालनपुर प्लीज सजेस्ट मी सम अपॉर्चुनिटीज इम्प्रॉय इन एग्रोनॉमिक्स ये सर ही ढूंढ रहे हैं एग्रोनॉमिक्स तो पंकज जी जो डॉक्टर अरुण प्रांजल जी आप तो आप तो हमारे यहाँ आ जाइए आप एक दिन जोगिंदर नगर आइए तो हम आपको बताते हैं क्या कर सकते हैं देखिए हो गया ना और आप डीपी बता फाउंटेन सी ओ जस्ट एग्रीकल्चर ठीक है सर मोस्ट वेलकम बडवाल साहब अपने बात करेंगे सो आई फील आई हैव आंसर्ड एवरी क्वेश्चन और मैडम नेक्स्ट टाइम हमारी फैकल्टी ऑलरेडी सर आ गए तो आई फील यू कैन गिव टाइम टू हिम सो गुड टॉकिंग टू यू ऑल ऑफ यू एंड थैंक यू वेरी मच डॉक्टर मीटिंग यू बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद आपका तो मैं लुक फॉर टू सी सर थैंक यू मैम एंड थैंक यू जस्ट एग्रीकल्चर फॉर इन्वाइटिंग अस एंड गॉड ब्लेस यू ईश्वर आप सबकी खूब रक्षा करे और लास्ट में मैं एक ही बात बोलना चाहता हूँ कि कर्म भूमि की इस दुनिया में श्रम सभी को करना पड़ता है कर्म यानी काम श्रम यानी मेहनत कर्म भूमि की इस दुनिया में श्रम सभी को करना पड़ता है ऊपर वाला सिर्फ लकीरें देता है रंग हमें ही भरना पड़ता है yes. ऊपर वाले का काम है आपको बनाना आपके आंख है हाथ है पांव है सब कुछ है आप देखिए कि काम तो मेहनत आप ही को करना पड़ेगा और मैं लास्ट में आप सबको एक बात बोलना चाहूंगा कि इस समय खूब अपॉर्चुनिटीज है खूब पॉसिबिलिटीज है अपने आंख कान नाक खोलकर लोगों से बात कर कर देखिए आपको पता लगेगा कि कितना काम है जो आज का यूथ एक गलती करता है गलती नहीं कहूंगा कि जिसको ध्यान देने वाली बात है कि समझो कोई बीएससी एग्रीकल्चर फर्स्ट ईयर पढ़ रहा है या कोई क्लास ट्वेल्थ में है या इंजीनियरिंग के फर्स्ट ईयर या सेकेंड ईयर में है या एम के फर्स्ट ईयर में वो क्या करता है कंसल्टिंग जानकारी उसी ग्रुप से लेना चाहता है तो जो बच्चा बारहवीं में दूसरों क्या ध्यान देगा खुद कंफ्यूज है जो बेसी एग्रीकल्चर फर्स्ट ईयर में खुद आप क्या करो अपने सीनियर के पास जाइए आप ऑफिसर्स के पास जाइए आप अपने माता पिता से राय लीजिए आपके गांव में जो ट्रेडिशनल खेती करते हैं उनसे राय लीजिए आपको जरूर से रास्ता मिलेगा मैंने ड्रोन मेरे बाप दादा ने भी कभी नहीं देखा मैंने पहली बार देखा तो मेरे पिताजी क्या देखेंगे पर हमने सीखने की इच्छा रखी टेक्नोलॉजी को पाया और ईश्वर ने अपने आप हमें रास्ता दिखाया और इस समय हम भारत के नंबर वन कंपनी हैं जो कि ड्रोन मैन्युफैक्चर करते हैं नमस्कार एंड थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू सो मच सर सर थर्टी मिनट्स के सेशन में हमें बहुत सारे कोलेबोरेशन देख लिए सर बहुत सारे इंटरेक्शन हो गई सर हमें बहुत अच्छा लगा एंड आई थिंक आवर पार्टिसिपेंट्स मस्ट ऑल्सो है सर रियल लाइफ प्रॉब्लम्स को बहुत अच्छे से आप आपने एक्सप्लेन किया सो वी वुड बी लाइक वेरी ग्रेटफुल टू यू इफ यू आर लिसनिंग टू सम इन सम अदर लाइक प्रोग्राम आल्सो सो थैंक यू वंस अगेन थैंक यू सो मच एंड अरुण सर आल्सो थैंक यू सो मच सर फॉर इंटरेक्टिंग सो नाइसली सो सर टाइम कंस्ट्रेंट की वजह से अब मुझे सेशन को एंड करना होगा एंड आई वुड लाइक टू कॉल अपॉन पीयूष टू कॉल अरुण सर नेक्स्ट सो ओवर टू यू सर थैंक यू प्रीति and uh, thank you uh, goinka sir and uh, also i would like to thank uh, dr anchandra sir for joining us from the last one hour and uh, giving his uh, major role in interacting with our speaker and uh, answering the queries before the, his own session also to our dear participants so dear participants uh, before inviting uh, arun chandan sir i would like to give a brief introduction of our speaker dr arun chandra sir he is regional director of regional cum felicitation center northern region of seven national northern indian states of national medicine plants board ministry of ayush government of india at research institute in indian system of medicine jogindranagar district mandi himachal pradesh sir is a dedicated and qualified medical specialist in ayurvedic medicine and surgery medicinal plants and is successfully working on various aspects of research and development issues of supply chain management of medicinal plants sectors in india sir is working on regulatory affairs of ayush system product development and product validation dr chandan sir has worked on coverage coverage models in health traditional medicines and suitable livelihood and related services in government and development sectors in india sir has network more than 6000 stakeholders of value chain of medicine plant sectors and has created an entrepreneurship model of livelihood generation through the sustainable utilization of 
medicinal plants, diversity, and bioresources, ensuring end-to-end -end solution. Sir had been the executive director of MF, MFH from 2009 to 2012 and the head of program at Voluntary Health Association of India. Sir had been the executive director and uh, has successfully undertook the status report of natural resource of Himachal Pradesh for NORAD and is creative experiment with new ICTs like uh, traditional folk stream bhagat of mass awareness proved very effective. Since his childhood, Dr. Chandan sir remained active in print journalism, contributed a lot number of articles in regional and national daily and magazines, and has action research oriented approach and pain for the downwards of Dalit. Dalit took him the development sector. His work on traditional medicines, disaster mitigation, and management motivated him to work on the crucial aspects of disaster management and climate change in the mountain. This was a brief short introduction of our next speaker, Dr. Arun Chandan, sir. Now I would like to invite you, sir, to please uh, bless the audience by your vast experience. Please, over to you, sir. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. This was a very long introduction, so I think it was not required. So, uh, first of all, thank you, PUC, uh, for accepting my voluntary request, actually, to be part of this program today. So, one of my uh, students, you can say, uh, Mr. Vikas Sharma, he told me uh, about just agriculture and uh, end of this event. So, immediately he said, uh, we should contact Dr. Pius Chaudhary and uh, the team at just agriculture and then so thank you for accepting uh, my my oh, my request for this. Uh, thanks to the Just Agriculture team. It's so, a pleasure. <laughs> so the, the interest is basically uh, since as as you came to know uh, from my this brief biography that for the last five six years we are working on uh, the value chain issues of medicinal plant sector in India. So this this is a this is a uh, this is an area which is very rightly very closely connected to agriculture, and you see there is a huge demand in the market, particularly post COVID situation. The demand of raw material of medicinal plants has considerably increased. So due to that increased demand, so this area, the work of agriculture, uh, the work of cultivation of medicinal plants, is 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 basically you see close to the. Uh, this uh, agriculture activity. So I thought uh, I should discuss on this platform, and uh, uh, we should take it uh, take it forward. So just allow me to uh, share my uh, presentation. Uh, so I think it is visible. Yes, sir, it's visible. You can switch over to slide mode. Yeah, now it is visible. Perfect. Huh? Yes. Sir. Okay. So I will be taking you to a tour through uh, the the Indian medicinal plant sector and Ayush systems. So you see, uh, eighty percent of world's population this depends on medicinal plants for healthcare. I am not saying this is a reference from WHO because the traditional systems of medicine they are affordable and accessible even to the poor people. Second, the plant-based medicines have their holistic and preventive health care value along with their nutritional value. Where the medicinal plants are used, one is Ayurveda, Siddha, Yunani and Homeopathy, food and nutraceutical. These are the categories where there are scope for entrepreneurship development in the coming times. I will be dealing with all these things in detail in my presentation. And medicinal plants form the major resource-based raw material. Almost all Ayush systems, food and nutraceutical, 90% of the uh, raw material is basically uh, that comes from medicinal plants. Uh, and you see there are six Indian systems now. Everybody may be knowing about it. Ministry Ayush came into existence in 2014. Earlier, this was a department under the Ministry of Family, Health and Family Welfare. National Medicinal Plants was created in 2000. The reason for creating National Medicinal Plants Board, where I work, was there is a there is a pressure from ten thousand odd uh, manufacturing companies. They are making Ayush drugs. They are making Ayurveda, Siddha, Yunani, Homeopathy, and now sixth system has been incorporated in Ayush in India. 
that is Swa Rigpa. It's a Tibetan system of medicine. We call it Bhot. We call it Amchi system uh, in, in Ladakh area, Leh Ladakh area. So there is another, uh, this is an another system which has been recently introduced in Ayush systems. And you see this traditional knowledge, traditional medicine, knowledge of plant genetic resources and traditional cultural expressions, they, they, are, they are part of this. And as I told you that global demand of traditional medicine has, has, has risen significantly. And uh, traditional medicine knowledge, this is basically protection of plant genetic resources and traditional cultural expressions, craft, language, health practices, rituals, customs, songs, handicrafts, textiles, hymens, religious practices, protection practices of natural resources, and so on. Research and innovation, basically traditional medicine knowledge. See, if you see uh, in the context of mountains, particularly the forest dependent communities or the forest dwellers, knowledge holders of traditional uh, medicine or the or the provider who are the carriers of traditional knowledge they are most vulnerable to misappropriation facing challenges of sustainability you may agree with this you will agree with the, with me on this that most of the traditional knowledge outstanding traditional knowledge which has not been properly documented uh, till today is at the verge of extinction or it is dying with the people so what happened uh, one Nyoga, Nyoga protocol came into existence. It was in 2014, where protection, excess and benefit sharing was introduced. If we are taking anything from the forest, uh, a mechanism has been made after uh, introdu introduction of this uh, Biological Diversity Act in India 2002. This protocol has been put in place in 2014. And now a recent act has been, has been put in place that is National Intellectual Property Rights Policy 2016, this is a great impetus on commercial value in traditional medicine knowledge. So most of the uh, people who are into agriculture, who are into uh, studying or learning about traditional medicine and all the traditional, they, they will understand this. And if you have any questions in this, I, I would love to reply to all those questions. You see, this is a slide about the global demand of medicinal plants. See, what was happening since 2000? We were observing that annual growth of demand of medicinal plants is, is, is increasing, is growing at the rate of 7%. And we were hoping that this, uh, this will become a US 5 trillion economy in 2050. See, what, what happens? The, the, the year which ended in uh, 2022, uh, June uh, or March, this demand has uh, considerably raised more than 30 to 40%. So, and if if uh, if we break up the demand of medicinal plants for health sector, you see we have around two thousand five hundred medicinal plants species which are used in all codified systems of medicinal medicine practices. Ayurveda we are using uh, one thousand five hundred eighty seven species. Siddha one one two eight. Yunani five zero three. Sorikpa two five three. Homeopathy four six eight. Western medicine we are using around one hundred and ninety two species. And if you see the segmentation where all these medicinal plants are used, one is this Ayurveda, Siddha, Yunani and homeopathic formulations I told you. Second is proprietary, ethical and OTC medicines. You, you know, most of the, though this is a category where no prescription of the doctor is required. Uh, after, the, after seeing that TV ad and all that, customer directly go to the uh, medical store and buys it. That's, that is uh, ethical OT, OTC medicine. Herbal cosmetics is a big area. Herbal teas and functional foods and nutritional. This is a new area which has come up only after 2017. You see most of the herbal teas, uh, spice teas and functional foods, beverages, herbal uh, protein powders and what not. Lot of nutraceutical products. So this, this was basically uh, brought in the limelight uh, because of the high demand in the global market. And this is a, this is a category where a lot of entrepreneurship uh, opportunities do exist for the younger people. And then there is a there is a segment of extracts, phytochemicals, resin and gums, flavors and fragrances, aromatic oils and aromatherapy, culinary herbs and spices, and veterinary herbal products. So these are the segments of this. And now I'll take you to uh, uh, just, just, a, just a visit to the supply chain of medicinal plant sector. So I will be speaking of uh, uh, on the top of this wild collection and downside I will be talking of cultivation. First, let us speak because uh, as I told you, 90% of the raw material uh, which is used in Ayush and other segments, that, that is plant-based. 
And out of that 90, 90%, more than 70, 75 to 80% raw material that comes from the forest resources, that comes from the wild. This is a big challenge for all of us because unsustainable harvesting is taking place. Species are becoming endangered and extinct. We are over harvesting. We are unscientifically scientifically harvesting. People are getting pressure from the pharmaceutical industry and uh, the, the, the extractors or farmer trader whosoever are there they are extracting them before time and natural regeneration is not is not occurring in that case so unsustainable uh, unsustainable harv harvesting pressure is there which we are tackling with good field collection practices ministry has a protocol in place we provide trainings to the extractors uh, traders that how to extract how to sustainably harvest these resources we are doing it uh, through biodiversity management committees and state biodiversity boards as well so uh, these protocols are, are available on our website i will i will share in the last how you can access them and how you can see what are the sustainable harvesting practices with respect to the medicinal plants so this is good field collection practices protocols then certification and traceability. These are two very interesting issues. As the demand has risen, you now the people are demanding that they want to know from where this medicinal plants has come. So uh, even even as Mr. Goenka was talking of uh, going, this uh, drone technology and all that, so I think all these things will be helpful to establish the traceability. Let me tell you one more thing here that under the Drug and Cosmetic Act, there is a provision that all the manufacturers in this country who are making Ayush medicines, they need to give us the details uh, for the traceability of the raw material they are using, from where they are getting, who is selling them, how much volume they are getting it out, so that we can link it to the farmers. And similarly, uh, demand for organic certification, demand for natural products and all that, in the global market, farmers can get very good price if uh, they are set certified in traceable products. And second uh, initiative which, have, which we have initiated is basically that is Biodiversity Management Committee Assisted Collection. I tell you two examples of this. Uh, people uh, who belong to the participants who belong to village areas, rural areas, particularly in UP and Himachal, Uttarakhand, government has notified Biodiversity Management Committees at the Panchayat level. So uh, the Niyogo protocol which I discussed in the beginning, what is that? So any raw material, any bioresource which is taken out of the panchayat area, panchayat forest area, a royalty should be given back to the panchayats to, to uh, this BMC. That royalty means that that royalty is to establish the traceability. So we have initiated this process also. So if someone is thinking to work on this because uh, authentic raw material, quality raw material for the pharmaceutical industries, for the food, beverages or nutraceutical industries is a big challenge actually. People are selling spurious raw material. People are trading spurious raw material. Even trading of the raw material is, is in, in, a, in another area where quality work can be done. Now comes the cultivation part. See, what is happening is people are growing Ashwagandha in Punjab. People are growing in Stevia in Punjab. Or if you go to the plains of Madhya Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh, lot of other crops are there uh, along with medicinal and aromatic plants. People are growing lemongrass, Khas, Betiva, a number of other, other crops also. People are growing Kalme, uh, Shatavri, a number of the, those species are there. So what we are doing is, we are trying to do is, here the problem comes with the farm. Because the earlier presentation I saw, uh, that agribid and all that. So we are interested to collaborate with them also. Just because we are working on assured crop price. Here, I'm not talking of any uh, MSP. No MSP here, but we are talking of the assured crop price. At least farmer, uh, the inputs of the farmer and profit should go back to him. So there must be some, uh, uh, this ACP uh, that, that there. So we are trying to regulate the trade of these cultivated crops in that manner. And then again, we are helping the farmers for certification. We are providing them good agricultural practices, trainings, inputs for that. And then uh, two issues are here where the graduates and postgraduates or specialists of agriculture can come forward. They can create a lot of uh, business for them. They can, they can do a lot of good service of the farming communities. One is the quality planting material. You see, a lot of research is, uh, is, has been done and is underway in the, the country or abroad to establish, to bring out new cultivars, 
and quality blending material of the specific high value medicinal plants you see if we are interested to replace paddy and rice in punjab uttar pradesh and haryana definitely we need to go for some high value crops and there are high value crops and the but the challenge is of quality planting material uh, see we are talking of genuine planting material elite and quality they are another far ahead uh, dream for us but still because this is an opportunity i would like to stress again and again that the young people who are into agriculture sector they should concentrate on this and because now specific genotypes specific kino chemotypes are required actually by the pharmaceutical industries and they are the uh, life changing uh, activities for the farmers as well as people who are working on this so similarly varieties yes cultivar and varieties both are the here again harvesting time seasonality uh, quality control then year long livelihood assurance these are some of the components we are seriously working on because we are working with the poor communities or small and marginal farmers as well so our objective is how they can make sure that livelihood is assured at the uh, village level or at the with the similar activities they are doing so then second uh, area is for the farmers parts actually and for the youth of agriculture uh, and this uh, post harvest management i would just like to throw some of the challenges in which they can work you see what we are doing we are trying to establish a network of collection centers mandi networks because uh, you, you saw this much is uh, the demand in the in, in the, uh, the, the industry is looking forward and uh, to meet out that demand we need collection centers and mandi networks so we are we are integrating it Uh, and we are trying to establish a network of mandis and then uh, post harvest management at farmers part we need technological interventions for sorting grading drying storage and transportation see for example if some farmer is cultivating shatavari in punjab so so in sangrur one farmer phoned us uh, day before yesterday that he has grown uh, shatavari in, in i think 10 acres now what to do processing of shatavari is a cumbersome work processing of ashwagandha drying of ashwagandha is a cumbersome work very few technologies are there and uh, i think preshi was very rightly saying uh, badwal sahab was very he was very rightly saying that uh, uh, the role of agriculture universities particularly the post harvest management uh, this thing technologies is, is very much relevant here i would like to compliment punjab agriculture university ludhiana we have taken uh, technology of solar drying from them they are very they have very nice solar dryer the technology they have done for small dryer big medium and uh, large scale dryers is wonderful technology good for medicinal plants and we are propagating that technology similarly here we are very much interested to collaborate with institutions like who can go for high value uh, drying technologies like freeze drying glycolization spray drying Uh, vacuum drying what not so this high tech drying technology will make the product of a farmer uh, ready for export so this is a huge gap where government is unable to intervene actually but there are scopes and uh, checks and uh, this thing uh, opportunities available in this sector so if i tell you next we are working on uh, trade regulations also we are working on uh product development and uh, semi processing because uh, if if you grow uh, large scale tulsi turmeric and other pro products definitely uh, we can go for value addition at the source uh, you see uh, i have observed in the last 4 5 years that good curcumin containing uh, turmeric is being cultivated in northern parts of this country but there is no market as mr goenka has rightly said but now we are making a map of all turmeric uh, growing areas where rich curcumin percentage uh, turmeric is being grown so that that can be linked to the market so similarly we are helping the entrepreneurs i am running one incubation center also with the department of industries at my institute so we are helping the entrepreneurs to come up with startups and all that so we help for product development and semi processing activity semi processing here i would like to refer again because uh, the participants who may be interested uh, in this subject is basically you see in allopathic system of medicine uh, they speak of apis this is uh, pharmaceutical ingredients so see for example if you take example of paracetamol the powder of paracetamol comes from china we are just punching the tablets so similarly if someone is making trifla uh, tablets so the opportunity is go for apis in ayurveda we can go for value added amla powder we can go for dried uh, harad powder or behera powder so this certified raw material can be given to the industry there 
all this uh, hurdle will be reduced and uh, farmers uh, or the entrepreneurs, they will be able to get the good price of the produce they may be working on. So uh, this is one area, product development. Uh, food supplements, I would again uh, like to highlight here, 436 species, medicinal plants, single herds, they have been permitted under FSSAI, under food safety regulations. They can be uh, made as single herb formulation. No need to go for any Ayush license. You can make uh, Trifla tablet, you can make uh, Giloe tablet, you can ma make... So this 436 that medicinal plants, if you Google it out, you will find FSSA regulation for medicinal plants. In 2017, December, this was notified. It's very clearly written there. You can access it out. And similarly, multiple uh, products of uh, food ingredients, herbs, uh, that comes under 13.6 category of nutraceutical. It is also notified there. So you can refer it out. And uh, this is an opportunity where startups and entrepreneurship can be done at a large scale. Large scale. So again, uh, uh, under our incubation and research, we are on drug development also. So the idea is basically to help the innovators, to help the outstanding traditional knowledge to come forward for uh, taking out all these activities. Uh, for marketing, yes, we do support marketing also. We have a uh, application e uh, This is a uh, this is an application available on Google Play Store. You can just download it, get registered yourself. You can sell your products. You can buy your products. And similarly, you can use this e online platform, this application. You can download all of our publications. All agro technologies of 106 plants are available there. GFCP, GPA, GAP, I discussed there. The manuals are available there. And you can access the Monday rates of uh, around 200 medicinal plants there. From northern region, we feed uh, rates uh, of uh, around 200 medicinal plants of uh, northern region six Mondays. To this application we have a website for the same each uh, dot in uh, you can access the website also and uh, uh, you can you can use this application for selling buying or even having feel of the market rates and all that so uh, yes this is startups and entrepreneurship uh, it's a good environment in india as it was told earlier so quickly let me tell you who are the key stakeholders we are working with. we work with cultivators collectors supply chain intermediaries uh, and then industry uh, nutraceuticals Swarigpa cosmetics policy makers research institutions ism practitioners folk healers international community definitely the individuals the farmers uh, or, or who are or whosoever is is interested to work on this sector uh, if if again just a repetition basically if, if you see the sourcing of supply chain, uh, this wild collection, cultivation, import, we are still importing 15 species. So uh, this is all. Rina raised a hand. So I, I'll take questions. Just I think three, four uh, slides are left. So uh, again, this is a repetition. But you see here, approximately, if we, have, if we see the consumption data, is around 6 lakh metric tons per annum. So this is pertain this pertains to around 100 to 150 medicinal plants. Uh, the the consumption of this raw material basically uh, is like this. And parallelly, if you see the similar amount of volume is in demand in the food and the nutraceutical sector, and sim the similar demand uh, if you see exports is like this uh, around two lakh 1.5 lakh metric tons. And then the rural households they are also using around two lakh metric ton of the raw material. They may be the housewives, they may be the uh, general healers and all that. So if if I see the uh, high demand species the number is 242 uh, they are more than 100 uh, metric ton per per year they are being traded so this is a uh, yeah this is another scheme i would like to tell you we have a scheme for voluntary certification for medicinal plants uh, the, the two protocol i told you that is one uh, uh, one was uh, this uh, gf uh, uh, this good field collection practices uh, and then uh, uh, otherwise, GAPs. So, dono ke liye we have uh, uh, manuals there, but we do have a protocol where uh, you can get your fields, get your forest certified from QCI. This we work with Quality Council of India. You can contact them. So, this uh, Quality Council of India will come to your place, and the amount of the expenses, whatever comes on this activity, is taken care by the National Medicinal Plant Board and Ministry. You can contact your state medicinal plants board and and and, and our centers. We have regional centers, seven regional centers across the country. 
Trust areas, conservation, cultivation, research and development, IEC and training, marketing trade, quality assurance, international cooperation. So here I would like to highlight some, some of the some of the areas where agricultural uh, graduates, postgraduates, or uh, agriculture related researchers can come forward for this. See, we are promoting research on multiplication of RET plants, this is rare endangered and threatened plants through tissue culture, computerized database of medicinal plants and monographs, bioactivity guided fractional studies. This is very much important because certain species, they are niche to particular areas, particular soil types and all that. So uh, projects can be funded on this. Sustainable harvesting, post-harvest management, intercropping, chemical and molecular profiling, quality planting material, germplasm and genotype identification and conservation, authentication and standardization crew drugs, and finding out substitute for rare and endangered and threatened plants. And uh, we do have a application, as I told you, this is some data related to that application. We have a national helpline. You can use it, 1-800-120-5778. This is a national helpline. You can ask for anything, supply chain related issues, QPM, nursery, cultivation, plant production, post-harvest management, marketing and all that. So we bring out a monthly journal also in Hindi. This is Jadiguti Bazaar. So uh, uh, I, I'll share with the group uh, some of the issues. So last 11, 12 issues, they, they will be, they are interesting to read. You will get a lot of good information in this. So this is my personal kind of thing. As Mr. Goenka has very rightly said, that the population of the population is very big. It so आप देखिए यहां कितना सारा है आपको स्किल इंडिया से भी सपोर्ट मिलता है स्टार्टअप इंडिया से मिलता है हर्ब्स एंड फूड फूड एज मेडिसिन में आपको न्यूट्रासिटिकल में बहुत सारा स्कोप काम करने के लिए उधर से खादी बोर्ड में चले जाइए केवीआईसी कमीशन में चले जाइए नो लॉट ऑफ प्रोजेक्ट्स आर देयर और एमएसएमई का जो मिनिस्ट्री है उसके आपके इनक्यूबेशन इनक्यूब में आपको इनोवेटिव प्रोडक्ट डेवलपमेंट के लिए आपको सहायता मिलती है इसके साथ-साथ मिनिस्ट्री फूड प्रोसेसिंग में चले जाइए वहां पर अपॉर्चुनिटीज की भरमार है हरियाणा में मैं देखता हूं हरियाणा का स्टेट एमएसएमई डिपार्टमेंट enormous opportunities are there. Itni sari schemes hai. Even farmer producer companies uh, ke liye horticulture department Haryana gives 90% subsidies to, to establish uh, nutraceutical units. Similarly, uh, all state governments like Punjab, Himachal, Uttarakhand, number of schemes are there. So I think we should, we should use them. And above all, again, I would like uh, take you back to the biodiversity. ABS, uh, this thing, this is an opportunity where sustainable harvesting and utilization of medicinal plants can be done. And this can be linked to the biodiversity and all that. So thank you very much for patiently uh, uh, listening to this. And uh, now I can take any questions. So yes, uh, yeah, you can ask the questions. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, it was really a wonderful presentation, sir. Uh, few of our participants are having some questions, sir. One question is from Ms. Siddhi Rathod, sir. She is asking, which medicinal crop can be taken in villages of Rajasthan? Which government will show some interest or any uh, subsidies and uh, any schemes are there? See, I, let me clear you. As I told you, 31st March 2021 was the last day when medicinal plant subsidy was withdrawn by the government. But if you are an NGO, if you are a research institution, if you are a government institution, you can submit a project under center sector scheme to National Medicinal Plants Board through the regional center, which is based in, for Rajasthan, it is in uh, Pune, uh, Pune Jyotiva Phule University. So uh, you, uh, you can just visit our website and take number from uh, them so, and you contact Dr. Mokert there. He is the regional director there. And in any case, you can even write to us also. And the species which can be grown in Rajasthan, you see uh, important species. Uh, I don't know from which area are you, because all this uh, selection of species, again, depends on the uh, soil conditions, definitely, and uh, availability of the irrigation and all that. But definitely, you see Rajasthan, uh, Google is doing very good, uh, very good production. Uh, Google is in big demand. So for five years, it takes to grow. And then this all your reason is marketed, uh, is sold at a good price. Aloe vera is a very right player, right species for uh, uh, Rajasthan. Although it's in a negative list of uh, us, basically, we don't encourage growing uh, this thing, aloe vera. But uh, still, I would, I, I hope that if something is done uh, as end-to-end -end solution, you need to wait for the buyer to come and uh, buy your uh, aloe vera leaves. No. 
you should actually come forward to uh, make a processing unit, start a small processing unit. A lot of schemes are available under your horticulture and other departments. Even if you come to us, yes, we do have the schemes. We give around 15 lakhs for setting up a processing unit. If it is run by a self-help group or a or a NGO through forest department or even NGO directly applies to us or a farmer producer company. So similar, similar projects can be done. Uh, there are opportunities. And you see, there are other species like Sharpunkha, Shankpushpi, number of species are there for Rajasthan. Those grow very nice. So, aapke yaha, uh, you, Gudmar has a very good scope in Rajasthan. You can grow it there. So, uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Uh, sir, there is one more question from Mr. Prem Chandra. Sir, he is asking, uh, he is interested in planting and cultivation of khas crops, sir. What are the market possibilities for him? Ye kahan se hai? Uh, Mr. Prem? Uh, Bihar, sir. Uh, you see, khas uh, ka jo scope hai na, khas, dekhiye, khas ko ushir kehte hai hama Ayurveda mein. And uh, ushir ka uh, root ka market Ayurveda mein khub hai. लेकिन मेरे अपने व्यक्तिगत अनुभव से मैं आपको कहना चाहूंगा कि अगर आपके पास कम जमीन है तो खस की खेती बहुत ज्यादा मुनाफे में नहीं जाएगी आपके पास प्लेंटी ऑफ लैंड होनी चाहिए बिकॉज़ इसकी रूट्स बहुत गहरी जाती हैं और खस का जो ऑयल है खस के ऑयल की मार्केट जो है वो बहुत अच्छी है आपको डिसलेशन से स्टीम डिसलेशन से इसका तेल निकालना पड़ता है ये लगभग 2 2 2.5 साल की क्रॉप है 2 3 साल तीसरे साल में आपको इसमें से तेल निकलता है so no doubt iska jo tel hai wo lagbhag pichle saal it was sold at the rate of rupees 24000 uh, rupees a liter and all that kilo to but dikkat sabse badi kya hai ki aapko area aapke paas sufficiently hona chahiye ha ye wasteland mein ugne wala plant hai aap ek bar laga denge to aaram se ug jayega to but mile jule iske liye anubhav hai aap khas ko agar sirf tel ke liye lagana chahte hain aapke liye sufficient jagah hai aap distillation unit jo ki minimum aapko 8 se 10 lakh rupaye lag jayenge lagane ke liye agar aapke paas ye sari taiyari hai to aapko lagana chahiye aur isko lagane ke liye aapko iski jo bilkul bilkul spasht takniki jankari jo hai wo aapko central institute of medicinal and aromatic plants jo cmap lucknow hai wahan jana chahiye वहां से आपको ट्रेनिंग करके वहीं से आपको प्लांटिंग मटेरियल लेना चाहिए अच्छी वैरायटीज उनके पास में है और फिर आप उसको लगाइए वहीं से आपको डिसलेशन टेक्नोलॉजी में मिल जाएगी डॉक्टर संजय कुमार जी हैं वहां जो खस पे काम करते हैं आपको उनके संपर्क वगैरह चाहिए होंगे आप मुझे मेरा नंबर आपके पास होगा मैं नंबर आप नोट कर लीजिए आप मुझे बताइए मैं कनेक्ट कर दूं थैंक यू सर वन पार्टिसिपेंट इज फ्रॉम सर कुशाल पालक सर ही इज फ्रॉम गुड़गांव सर he is asking that uh, he is growing a milk pestle uh, in two acre area uh, can you just suggest him any market possibilities near to his local area dekho milk thistle ka demand to acha hai because this is a ingredient for liver disorder medicines to agar aap gurgaon mein hain to aap aap hamara e charak ke application ko upyog kariye ek application main aapko aur batata hu herbical H E R B I C A L ये दूसरा एप्लीकेशन है आप इन दोनों एप्लीकेशन को यूज करिए एंड यू पोस्ट योर क्वेरी आपको कोई ना कोई इसमें से मिल जाएगा और मैं आपको और सजेस्ट करूंगा कि आप आसपास में दिल्ली के आसपास में फाइंड आउट सम एक्सट्रैक्शन यूनिट जो इसका एक्सट्रैक्ट बनाता है इसका मिल्क थिसल का एक्सट्रैक्ट बना के भी आप किसी को बेच सकते हैं दैट यू कैन गेट गुड वैल्यू फॉर द प्रोड्यूस यस सर uh one more question sir uh one participant is from uh mr kartik bajaj from up merit uh he is asking uh, for uh, his locality uh, can you suggest some of the medicinal plants which are easily cultivable and having a good scope of market dekhi sahab merit wale area mein to aap inko shatavari karni chahiye tulsi karni chahiye ashwagandha karna chahiye kalme karna chahiye main kya bolta hu pc ke dekhiye होता क्या है किसान जो है ना सीधे तौर पे जड़ी बूटी पे नहीं जा सकता है उसको ना एक इंटीग्रेटेड मॉडल अडॉप्ट करना चाहिए अब उसको ऐसी फसलें लेनी चाहिए जो तीन महीने बाद भी लग जाएं शॉर्ट टर्म क्रॉप्स लेनी चाहिए छह महीने वाले फसल भी लेनी चाहिए फिर साल वाली लेनी चाहिए फिर दो साल वाली लेनी चाहिए इससे क्या उसका इंटरेस्ट बड़ा अच्छे से बना रहता है तो अगर मैं मेरे डेरी की बात करूं वहां का जो जनरल एक्सपीरियंस है आप शतावरी लगाइए शतावरी के साथ में मिर्च लगाइए 
लाल मिर्च हरी मिर्च लगाइए आपकी इकोनॉमिक्स जो है ना वो व्हीट से राइस से चार गुना हो जाएगी और इसी तरह से आप यू कैन गो फॉर अशुगंधा छह महीने की फसल है छह महीने से भी कम की फसल है आप इसको बरसात के बाद लगाइए उसके बाद में इसको जो है वो दिसंबर जनवरी में हार्वेस्ट हो जाता है ये और इसी तरह से यू कैन गो फॉर कालमेक कालमेक का भी बहुत अच्छा हालांकि इससे लो प्राइस क्रॉप बट क्योंकि तीन महीने में हो जाता है देख ले देख रेख की कोई जरूरत नहीं है सो so, जो भी आपकी वेस्टलैंड पड़ी है वहां लगा दीजिए वो चल पड़ेगा टर्मेरिक इज बेसिकली बड़ी प्रोमिजिंग फसल है अगर आप टर्मेरिक की अच्छी वराइटीज लगाते हो यू सी दिस प्रगति इज ए वराइटी विच हैज बीन डेवलप बाई इंडियन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ स्पाइसिस रिसर्च मेरे नॉर्थ इंडिया में मैं देखता हूं तो हजारों एकड़ में ये प्रगति वराइटी इज डूइंग वंडरफुल अब इसी तरह से राजेंद्र सोनी एक अनदर वराइटी है अगर आप इंडियन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ स्पाइसिस रिसर्च की टर्मेरिक की वराइटीज को देखते हो तो प्रगति हैज डन वेरी गुड मैं इवन मेरे एरिया में भी बोलूंगा कि इनको कुछ एरिया में टर्मेरिक लगानी चाहिए जिसमें चार से पांच परसेंट करकुमेन आ जाती है सो यू कैन प्रोसेस इट एंड अकॉर्डिंगली यू कैन सेल इट आउट और अगर ये थोड़ा सा और इंटरेस्ट लेते हैं तो मैं तो ये सलाह दूंगा कि मैं तो एक ही बात बोलता हूँ देखिए युवा के लिए जो करने वाले हैं देखिए हम हम ना एंड टू एंड सोल्यूशन ढूंढे हम खुद उगाएं खुद उसका प्रोसेस करें खुद बेचें जब वो खत्म हो गया हम अमेजोन को कह दें कि भाई नहीं अब अगले साल मिलेगा सो इफ वी मेक दिस काइंड ऑफ क्रेडिबिलिटी एंड इफ वी मेक दिस काइंड ऑफ एंड टू एंड सोल्यूशन तो आप सोचिए आपकी अपनी क्रेडिबिलिटी ट्रेसिबिलिटी बहुत आगे चली जाती है आपका दिमाग खुद काम करेगा हाँ नो देर आर स्पीशीज लाइक कोलियस देर आर स्पीशीज लाइक ग्लोरियोसा सुपरवा जो फार्मास्यूटिकल इंडस्ट्री में डिमांड वाले हैं हम उनको भी उगा सकते हैं आप ग्लोरियोसा सुपरवा भी उस एरिया में हो सकता है बट वो है कि देन यू डिपेंड ऑन फार्मास्यूटिकल इंडस्ट्री एंड एट द टाइम ऑफ हार्वेस्ट दे विल बार्गेन विद यू दे विल बाय टू दे विल इवन इंसिस्ट टू बाय ऑन ए वेरी लोअर प्राइस ये एक चैलेंज हमेशा रहता है चैलेंज और मैं अपनी मिनिस्ट्री में सब लोगों से एक ही बात कहता हूँ देखिए हमें कोई ऐसा सूत्र बताइए जिसमें किसान कंपनी की लड़ाई का अमाल कर सके किसान कभी नहीं मानेगा कि उसके प्राइस में उसकी क्रॉप में कोई फर्क आया या उसकी क्वालिटी निकृष्ट हो गई होने के बावजूद भी नहीं मानेगा कंपनी जो है वो अच्छा होने के बावजूद भी नहीं बोलेगी कोई ना कोई ट्रैफिक का जैसे चलान होता है ना वो कोई ना कोई चलान निकाल देगी कि भाई इसमें तो ये नहीं है इसका वो नहीं है वो ये जो आपस का ये टांटा है ना इसका हमने हाल ये निकाला कोशिश हम ये कर रहे हैं कि लेटेस्ट कम फॉरवर्ड विद कॉन्ट्रैक्ट फार्मिंग जो गवर्नमेंट का एक्ट है 2018-17-18 का उसके मुताबिक हम कंपनियों के अनुबंध करा देते हैं और हम इंसिस्ट करते हैं कि तुम ही बीज दे दो जैसे मैं अब इवन मेरठ वाली इनकी बात करूं इस एरिया की दे शुड गो फॉर मोरिंगा इनको मोरिंगा लगाना चाहिए और मुरिंगा में भी किसी के चक्कर में ना आए ये कि मुरिंगा का को कोई प्लांट दे रहा है इनको ये कुछ कर रहा है इन सीटू सीट से मुरिंगा लगाएं आप इनको बोले हमारे साथ संपर्क करेंगे हम इनको कोई ऐसा व्यक्ति दे देंगे जो पचास साठ रुपए की लेन से मुरिंगा के लीफ खरीद लेगा डेंस कल्टीवेशन में मुरिंगा करिए चार पांच साल एक पौधा लगे चार पांच पांच साल आपको वो मजे देगा आराम से दो साल बाद उसकी रूट भी हार्वेस्ट करते हो तो रूट बार की बहुत अच्छी मार्केट है सी द आइडिया इज बेसिकली हाउ टू गेट कनेक्टेड टू ए राइट पर्सन फॉर ऑल दीज एक्टिविटीज एंड एंड स्पीशीज की लिमिट नहीं है सर कौच लगाइए मेरिट में कौच बहुत अच्छा हो जाएगा अब कौच में भी इंडियन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ हॉर्टिकल्चर बैंगलोर की वराइटीज में जाइए उनकी बहुत अच्छी वराइटीज हैं जिनमें रोए नहीं है कांटे नहीं है आप उनको आसानी से लगा सकते हैं सो लॉट ऑफ लॉट ऑफ अपॉर्चुनिटीज दे डू एग्जिस्ट पीयूष जी थैंक यू सो मच सर for delivering a wonderful lecture and sharing your vast experience with our participants and uh, making the session very interactive in the earlier session also i can see that our uh, dr goindka sir is still connected and uh, really i would like to thank you for delivering the opportunities and places for the uh, participants and uh, letting them know for um, where they could contact and all also if any participant uh, is uh, having any query or related to the market and all sir has uh, permitted us to please uh, uh, feel free to contact so i am just sending sir contact number as sir shared along with his email id so if any participant is having any query related to market and all feel free to ask sir that will be a honor sir thank you sir yeah theek hai ji thank you very much thank you i am sure i have addressed every question koi bacha nahi hai and uh, anyone anyone can contact us not a problem they can they can write us any time yes sir thank you so much sir for delivering your lecture on our platform we are highly obliged thank you so much sir thank you ji our participants uh, thank you for joining now we will welcome you in the evening session uh, the link will be shared into your whatsapp group thank you one thank you all